What's up, Internet? My name's Nerdy. And I'm Clarouse. And this is The Nerdy. The Wordy. The Book Club. Hell yeah. 2024 edition. We made it. Welcome to a new year, everybody. And welcome to a new series. New year, new series, new book. New year, new series, new book. That's right. Uh, before we get into the show today, uh, this is going to be the start of a new adventure for us. A very long adventure that isn't yet finished. So I actually don't know when we will finish this series because uh, I don't know when Labrando Lasando. It's okay. He's a speedy. He's a speedy boy. How many ways do you think I'm going to come up with to missay his name over the next five, 20 years? 20 years I don't of think, book club? Here's the problem. I don't think he's ever going to stop writing books. He wrote five last year. So I feel like we're going to be, the, we, we are starting an adventure that we are going to be on for the rest of our life. Probably. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know what, that's fine. Unfortunate. That's okay. um, <laughs> But uh, to start today, we just want to welcome in anyone who maybe hasn't been a part of the book club before, who's here because uh, they like the Cosmere. Mm -hmm. We just want to say, hey, we are first time readers. We've never read any Brandon Sanderson book other than the three Wheel of Times that he uh, finished. Correct. And so we have some rules. Clarus, yes. what are the rules? Well, okay. So first first rule, please no spoilers in the chat. Um, <clears throat> that seems obvious. It se and yet. <laughs> it seems obvious. <laughs> um, uh, I know nobody here is going to purposefully try and spoil us, but our mods are going to err on the side of caution, okay? If your comment accidentally gets deleted and it wasn't a spoiler, Please don't fight them on it. They are, we have asked them to err on the side of caution, not only for us, but for other first time readers who are joining us. I, I know that there are some people who are also starting their Cosmere journey with this book club. Mm -hmm. um, so no spoilers in the chat. No like confirming hypotheses and that kind of thing that leans into spoiler territory. And if there are things in the future that we've forgotten about previous books, please do not Remind us unless we ask. Yeah. Um, there's something really, really special about loving a book series and being able to go back and pick up on things that you missed the first time. Yeah. Um, so if we forget, that's that's on us. That is our fault, and we're going to have to live with those mistakes. So, yeah, no no spoilers, no, like, confirming um, things that we might say or being like, oh, wow, they're, like, really on track or, like, something like that. Like, just, just I don't know, be silent and throw some, like, eyeballs in the chat or whatever if we're talking smack um and then <laughs> if we're talking if we're, smack. if we're talking smack and then yes please know um don't get mad at us if we forget stuff and remind us from previous like i it's spoiler alert i really love these this book so far and so i want to be able to go back and read it and pick up on the things that i missed yeah um i i, I don't want to notice every single detail the first time around i love rereading books i reread aragon over 30 times it's special to me. Um, we are also on YouTube and Twitch at the same time. So just want to and say Facebook. hello. Oh, and Facebook. Yes. Yeah. Um, hello, Facebook. Hello, Twitch. Hello, YouTube. Um, we are going to kind of go over the rules very briefly again um, for the first like couple episodes in case people like find it and jump in and are like, oh, I want to participate. Um, if you I, see... I, I want to add a couple things to okay. that before you move on. Okay. Uh, the spoiler levels for the Discord are as follows. The main Cosmere channel that just says Cosmere mm -hmm. is only things that we have read. So yes. only up until the week that we have that we have read and talked about on the channel. If we have not talked about it on the channel yet, it is not for that channel. Mm -hmm. There is a full spoilers for Mistborn Era 1 mm -hmm. channel where you can talk about what we're currently discussing. That <laughs> channel will move to the next series when we move to the next series. Yes. So it'll go like Mistborn Era 1. Once we finish Mistborn Era 1, that channel will be Mistborn Era 1 and Mistborn Era 2. And then this will also, uh, then there is a full Cosmere spoiler channel. The full Cosmere spoiler channel does include all of the secret projects. So if you do not want to be spoiled for any of the secret projects, don't go in the cosplay spoiler channel. Yes, yes. Cos Sorry, Cosmere. there's three channels. Cos Cosmere. Yes. Uh, don't go in the cosplay the channel. The dyslexia <laughs> begins. Um, yes. Okay. Um, uh, uh, tacking on to uh, spoilers again. If you think that you see a spoiler in chat that our mods have missed, you may put one S. Mm -hmm. One S in the chat. Do not spam the chat with this S. It is very, very easy for us to see a message that contains a single letter, and it is very easy for the mods to see. If you start spamming the chat, it is much more difficult for them to go back 
and like scroll while the chat's also scrolling and and, yeah. it, and it's a mess. So if you think that you see a spoiler, maybe our mods are taking a sip of coffee, whatever it is, you may put a single S in the chat as like a warning and the mods will take a look at it and we will avert our eyes from chat for the moment. It is very easy for us to notice. You do not need to spam the chat. We appreciate you trying to help us remain spoiler free. Um, also, Bef welcome our new mods. Welcome our new mods. Hello. Uh, Arzu, Rob Ross, and Threk. Thank you, Be guys. nice to them. Yes, be nice to them. Be nice to them, especially Arzu, because Arzu gifted 10 memberships. Arzu, thank you so much. Thank you for that gift. Putting some green in the chat, letting those people see Dragon last next week. Uh, I, yes. Let's get through, before we get into our sponsors, let's get into the people who actually pay our bills. Alec, thank you for being a Narg for 23 months. Welcome back to the Nerd Table. I've been waiting for this one with a lot of excitement, us two. Hoping to Same. see those nerdy hot takes and wild predictions. Uh, guys, I am so, I, you're going to be disappointed today. Uh, I've got wild predictions, but I've got nothing but cold, cold takes on this one. Cold takes. I've got cold takes. It's really good. Uh, Arzu, the 10 memberships, thank you so thank much. Thank you, Arzu, and welcome to the mod team. Um, uh, uh, Nicholas Cardillo. Thank you for seven months at the nerd table. Oh my God, I'm so happy. I literally just finished releasing to this book last week. I don't know what that means. <laughs> and I'm on the fourth, Miss Burn. I thought you were going to start with Stormlight. Uh, if, if this is what you release to... But we, no we don't king, king shaming. No king shaming. King shame uh, I think they meant reading. I know. Uh, I know. I know. <laughs> We're uh, just joshing. Stephen Mecca. Your name's cut off. It's cut off. I'm so thank sorry. Thank you so much. That's super Steven, chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Man, I didn't know you were even starting this series. It's fantastic. I can't wait to see your opinions. Again, lukewarm. It's it's really good. <laughs> uh, I like it a lot. Uh, John, the this is not going to work. Okay. Yeah, just move it over there. That's fine. That's fine. Now we can actually see people's names. Uh, that was Stephen McAvoy. Uh, Thank you. And, and John, John the John John. The John the John John. I have to catch up after work. So excited for this. Vin is my queen. Understandable. Yeah. Uh, and God's favorite princess. Do not tell Shard that. She will yeah, kill yeah. you because Shard is a murderer. And will kill Vin. Uh, and most interesting girl in the world. Wow, you really you really are coming for the Baldur's Gate community with that one, John the John John. <laughs> I wish you luck. Yes, yes. Uh, and then finally, uh, Lay Luna, thank, thank you so much for, for that super, super chat. chat. So, so many first super chats, guys. Uh, so you. excited you're starting Cosmere. I really appreciate your honest and genuine comments through Wheel of Time. That's one way to put it. Uh, and endlessly appreciate that you discuss the problematic stuff that most people ignore. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? We, uh, we're we never going to be one to sweep shit under the rug. Yep. And uh, the people who stick around, you're the real ones. So yep. thank you for that super chat. Uh, all right. Well, uh, since we talked to all of those people, uh, yes. those war wonderful people, we also should thank mention you, you, the you. actual sponsor for today, which is MistyMountainGaming.com. That's right. Uh, MistyMountainGaming.com is where you can go if you want to pick up all of the accoutrement necessary to make your tabletop RPGs come to life with vivid dice colors, vivid dice metals, vivid dice glasses, vivid uh, little swirly bits of liquid inside of resin dice. Vivid, glitter. Vivid, vivid glitter. Vivid. You want a D100? They got that shit. You want a D1? They don't. Sorry. That's not a thing. That's just a ball. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> wow. <clears throat> hot take, hot take, hot take. Uh, MissyMountainGaming.com is our incredible sponsor. Uh, we love working with them, uh, and we love their dice. We only roll their dice on our channel. Uh, and you can see us roll their dice next week on Dragonlance. Hell yeah. Um, if you are a member, a Narg of the Nerd Table, you get to watch that live with us. Saturday, so. January 13th at about 1 p.m. EST. Yes. And, uh, yeah, go to MissyMountainGaming.com. Use code NerdyNightly15. Mm -hmm. I personally recommend their uh, new liquid course. They have some really cool ones. Very nice. The one that is, like, the black and gold liquid inside. It's, like, Lost Treasure or something. Uh, very, very cool. And um, and the uh, lava glass dice yeah. are really, really beautiful. Yeah. I highly recommend at least going to look at them because you can, like, shine a light through them and they, like, ref oh, it's, yeah, anyways, I can't explain it. Gotta go look. Uh, Benjamin Pecanic, thank you so much for joining ben the Nards. Bogdan. Bogdan. What did I say? Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> it begins. So for those of you who are here for uh, Cosmere and have never been here before, um, I'm dyslexic. <laughs> Uh, and so just, if I, just enjoy me not getting names right. Just, I, I will. Great. It's gonna be great. Uh, Bogdan, welcome to the nerd table. We hope you love it here. As Trippy, well as thank you for Trippy. joining the nerds. Welcome to the nerd table. AMV fan says, did you know Kelsier was in Fortnite? I did not know that. Did not know that. I thank gotta pick up that skin. for that super chat. That is very fun. 
All right, all right, all right. Kenny Telgy, thank you for becoming a Kenny, Nard. Kenny, thank you so much. just received much. my huge Demogorgon and Hell Golem from MistyMountainGaming.com. Let's go, Hell Kenny. yes. Oh, my God. Kenny, uh, Kenny uh, sent us a little Christmas present. Uh, they sent mm -hmm. us the D and D animated series from the '80s that I've never seen. Me neither. And we might react to it because I've like never been so excited about an animated show in my life. It's one of those weird things where like you can't really find it anywhere. So like, I don't know if it's great for the patrons, but yeah, for the YouTube it would be great. For patrons, like I don't know if you'll be able to watch along unless you also have those DVDs. Um, but uh, unless Kenny, it's stream, it might you, be streaming thank you, somewhere. Thank you. It might. It, it might. Be. Are you gonna look it up right now? Yeah, why not? Um, Exalted Clown, welcome back to the Nerd Table for twenty months. Oh my God. Oh, it was Ken Kenny. Two years. No way. Two freaking years. Uh, Dragonlance, really excited for that. So are we. Um, oh, it's just it's on YouTube. It is on YouTube. Well, don't, okay. Well, there you go. Easy, easy. GG, easy. Right. Um. Uh. Yeah. Dragonlance, guys, is gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, we're really looking forward to more to TRPG content. Yeah, this we're year. gonna be filming the first episode of it. Uh, not the first. The, the session zero won't be live. We're gonna yeah. film it tomorrow. Yes. Uh, everyone's coming to the house. Our, our like main cast is all gonna be here. I'm so uh, excited. And then so you'll be able to watch the session zero on Tuesday mm -hmm. on the channel at 6 p.m. EST. Uh, and then after that, uh, we'll be live every Saturday for members and YouTube uh, and Twitch subscribers. Mm -hmm. uh, those episodes will then go live on Monday nights. Uh, and Expanse is going to move to Tuesdays. Yes. Um, Sorry, Expanse people. And so that's going to be module Mondays as mm -hmm. we explore the module Curse or uh, Shadow of the Dragon Queen. It is, I think, everybody's first time doing a module. Like yeah. An official None of us module. have ever done D&D before. We We've all, all done homebrew. We've all done homebrew stuff. <laughs> So I'm really excited for that. Uh, but, uh, oh. Josu, uh, jo Josu, I'm so Vasquez. sorry. Uh, thank you for that, that super wrong. chat. Thank you. I've been waiting for this moment since you started The Wheel of Time. Really? This is one of the best trilogies of all time. You were like, okay. you know what? They're going to pick up Wheel of Time, and the natural progression of that is obviously Mistborn. I mean, I, I get fair. it. Which fair. Honestly, that's fair. I don't really think they feel very similar, interestingly, but we'll no. get into those things later. I am okay with that. Alex Rabitsky, uh, thank, thank you for so that super the chat. Super duper chat. Hope you guys read Stormlight before getting to Mistborn Era 2, mm -hmm. but one of the things I love most about the Cosmere is its access. Accessibility. Yeah, there was yeah. definitely some um, contention about where we should start in the order. If you want to be part of discussing what we read next, that all happens in the Discord. So yeah. please join the Discord. <clears throat> yeah. um, do you guys are going to vote on what we do next? I feel like we'll probably do Stormlight. Yeah. That are seems to be... Are we going to do a chapter reaction? Because it wasn't something that we yeah, talked the end of the about. Book. The end of the book. Oh, no, we've talked about it in the Discord. Oh well, I was not present. Yeah, we do one. Per, we do one free audiobook reaction per book. Okay, and we that's been chosen. Uh, I don't think it's been chosen, but I think that like there's the the good stuff is later on. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, thirty four, chapter thirty four. Sure. Chapter thirty four. I don't know what Arzu is the mod. We just do what Arzu tells us. Whatever to do. Arzu says goes. <laughs> that is how this channel works. Uh, Curtis, welcome to the nerd table. Thank you for being on this journey with us. We are so excited. All right. All right, everybody. Welcome in. Let's talk about the beginning of this uh, book. Let, mm -hmm. Let's just, uh, well, actually, Clarice, uh let's do general thoughts first. Uh, how do you feel so far about Mistborn Era 1, Book 1, The Final Empire? Well, see, here's the thing. I didn't want to stop reading, so I feel like that's... Yeah. Uh... It ends in a pretty good spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like rude almost that we had to stop here, but yeah. I, get, I get it. I get it. I agree with that. Um, I literally was like, I do not want to stop reading this book. And so I went and I bought the audiobook and I started listening to it from the beginning. <laughs> Wait, this book? Yes. Last <laughs> night. That's what I was listening to while I was painting. <laughs> yeah. You're... I'm already on my reread. It's great. Um, so, so you're you're pausing your wheel of time re-listen to yeah yeah yeah. That, Brian that Etty, thank you for that super Brian, chat. Thank you for the super duper chat. Hello, Master Nerdy and Lady Clarus. Ooh, I like that. Uh, this like will be it. a very good book club, I think. Can I interest you in a religion? It could be a good fit for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think its followers are called the Knights of the Nerd Table. Thank you so much, Brian. That is very funny. Well done, well done. We're gonna need like a, a Knights of the Nerd Table shirt. Um, mm -hmm. And if if um. Oh, God. I'm going to be terrible with names because it's the first time reading them all. But if T, whatever T, the Terrisman's name is. Uh, Sazed? S yes. Sazed. Sazed or... I thought it was Sazed because it looks like how you spell raised, like raised the field. I And I and then he called him Saz. So I was like, maybe it's Sazed. Mm. Like, you know, very Shakespearean Sazed. So um, we're going to go with that, maybe. <laughs> Why is that Shakespearean? Um, 
the the ed at the end to like make it iambic pentameter. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Like I used to always call. I was like, I don't know anyone I, named Say Zed from Shakespeare. The the play the the cursed child. I always called it the cursed child because it just sounded better. No, that's probably how the British would say it. Probably. The cursed child. Well, that, okay. Sure. From the J.K. Rowling's. Um, yeah. I heard she doesn't like the trans people. Yeah, fuck her. Um, <clears throat> if you're, okay, we're making it very clear where we stand. Okay, if you're new here. It. Say Z. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, let's kick him out now. Hey, guys. Uh, this is a very, we're both <laughs> queer. Uh, and this is a very trans inclusive space. Yeah. If you don't no, like the LGBTQI pluses, this is, this is not, you're not going to enjoy this <clears throat> at yeah. all. I'm um, uh, saving <laughs> you the time. Just leave now. Yes. Just fuck off. Farewell. If you don't uh, like the gays, <laughs> get the fuck out. Because you don't like us and we don't want you here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but everybody else, welcome in. Let's have fun. Uh, let's fucking go. So gold. what did you think of the book? Uh, great. Fantastic. Love it. Um... I I'm so excited. I already have like some predictions going. There's so much interesting stuff. Ooh, like, sorry, one yes. second. We keep getting interrupted by you guys joining the narc. So Thank I'm so you. excited. No, no, no. It's uh, all good. To Thanisk, uh, a little help for pronunciation of misborn names. They're supposed to sound like French names. That doesn't help me, but it helps you. So Zed. Sure. No, Bless I would, you. you wouldn't say say Zed in French. Be say yeah, say a say say. Sazade, probably? Sazade. But then his nickname Sazade. is Saze, so it's like... Saze. Yeah, whatever. Saze. Well, Saze is, Saze. Six, Saze is 16 in French. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Saze. It's been a while since I counted in French. Ah, uh, Titanic's welcome back to the nerd table. Hell yeah! Um, so if you are joining us for the first time, this is Mistborn Book 1, The Final Empire, Part 1 and 2. And the prologue. And the, yes, and the prologue. No, we skipped the prologue. Okay, we're going to ignore chat for a second. What did All you right. think of the book Great. so far? Love it. What about you? Uh, I am really enamored with it. I think that the um, the disconnect that I had with the Wheel of Time in my desire for the world building to m provide some clarity for how the world works... <laughs> uh, was what uh -huh. was a point of contention between me and that book mm -hmm. series kind of the whole way through where I kept being like please just explain the one power please yeah. please just get and like how does this work I, we kind of eventually get there in like book nine but but even that's kind of and it's still a little bit ambiguous which... so to just have a book series kind of lay out for me the ways in which I can get excited about the power system mm -hmm. is for my taste. This yeah. isn't going to be for everyone. There's going to be people who read this and are like, I don't fucking care about the medals. Sure. I read it and I was like, I fucking care about all of, tell me everything about the medals. Well, and the I want to know about all the alloys. The fun part about it is that honestly, like I think that limitations, I, this is a, this is a saying, especially in like um, art, but like limitations breed creativity. Yeah. And so it, it, the more like, in a way, the more rules you have around it, the more interesting, like, backwards or, like, like stuff that you can do with it, that that just becomes more interesting to me. Other than, yeah, I just you pulled some more power, you know? Well, and one <laughs> of the things that the book does almost immediately that uh, I always really love is it brings up the personality traits that tend to come with the certain kinds of mistings mm -hmm. and the ways in which that... Um, really influences who they are as a person by how they in like the, the book talks about them as if the way they're interacting with the world influences their personalities in the world and i thought that or like, do you think it's the other way around um do you i think don't that it's like inherent or do you think that it's learned i don't think any personality traits are inherent in anybody um i think that I there are like you know like i'm autistic so like for me like there are elements of my personality that come down to how my brain works mm -hmm. but i think that the way in which I've interacted with the world and the things that like, you know, I, I love musical theater, but like my mom loves musical theater. So do I love it or did I grow up around it? And so it's comfortable for me. right? Yeah, right. So I, I don't think that I, I, I don't, I love Star Wars, right? I love Star Wars so much, but I was also introduced to Star Wars because my mom was a huge Star Wars fan in the 80s, mm -hmm. and she took me to see the special uh, editions when they released in 95. So like for me, it's it's hard to like, point at any part of my personality that could just have come out of the ether and when I, I, I can be like well no there's this line from here to here to here to here and i do think it is a combination mm -hmm. you know like i think that there are plenty of people who grew up in very artistic families and don't don't have that creative side they're very analytical um there was a super, yeah, there chat. Was a super chat nicholas, nicholas Cardillo, thank you uh, i recommend thank you try graphy audiobooks as a movie i'll graphy have to check audiobooks. that out all right thank cool, you. cool cool thank you 
Um, yeah, I think that um, I think that it's never like one or the other. I think that there is a combination because things are more interesting or you have a predisposition to or whatever it might be and then but if you are a very creative person you maybe don't grow up in a creative environment yeah. or even know that it's possible like mm, who who knows you you might never like nurture that side of yourself so i think that it's really fun that it can be both of those things and i think that i think that you're right i think that like the um the mistborn type that you or sorry misting type that you are mm-hmm. is probably a combination both of like a little bit of how your brain works and a little bit of how like this works for me and so yeah. i'm going to like uh, the, like this is going to influence my personality mm-hmm. and like who i am as a person but, but not create like super tropey people i think yeah. that like you know like the um What's the thug's name? Ham. Ham. Uh, Ham being a thug. And so there's elements of his personality that feel like other thugs, but also he is his own man. Yeah. And he is like, he's a softer version of them, even though he's the best of them. And like, is it his softness that allows him? I don't know if I. No! I don't know how I feel about that. I think he asks very interesting, pointed questions that a lot of people are like, ah, shut the fuck up. Don't worry about it. No, I like legit, I was reading (laughs) Ham and I was like, oh, I see it. I see it. I was like, oh, I would definitely sit there and have this conversation with him for an hour. Absolutely. That's what I I mean. I fundamentally disagree with him on what he says, but. um, we, we would have a great conversation. A, a thousand percent. And I would fast, I would watch that conversation with fascination. Ooh, Daniel Clauser says Sanderson gender swapped Ham for his Mistborn script. I could see that. I could see that. You would have to, right? Like this, this movie would be so male heavy. Yes. Your mom's in the chat. Mom. <laughs> What's up, my mom? Hi, Trish. <laughs> How you doing? It's probably Star Wars 2. Yes, I, I definitely didn't, had, had nothing to do Star with Wars. the things that you love. Mm-hmm. Uh, nothing at all. Um... <laughs> Everyone say hi, Nerdy's mom in chat. <laughs> I love or that, hi, mom. I, I, I love that my mom just has her, like, full name. Mom, you need, like, you need an online alias. Um, I'm, yeah, no. She's fine. <laughs> oh, the crowd control thing's coming up. Guys, don't buy coins for crowd control. It's not accurate. Oh, yeah, don't, don't do crowd control. That's not on. We're not doing a crowd control book club. I don't know how that would work. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I just... I, I, for me, the characters are really strong. The relationships are really strong. All of the characters are pretty, like, um, developed, but have a lot of mystery and intrigue elements that I'm excited to learn about. The ways in which the POV switch is both revealing and hiding things about our characters, I think, yeah. is really well thought out. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the themes of the world are, are really interesting and strong. It's so bleak. Yeah. But the the, the the one of the issues that I had with Wheel of Time as we were going through it was that the bleakness of that series was separate from our characters' goals, and so it felt like the bleakness was not being commented on in a way that was that I thought really worked. And so yeah, you know, like we fair. talked a lot about the slavery in Wheel of Time, and the the slavery in Wheel of Time is treated as a function of the world that is necessary, right? Uh, at times, mm-hmm. and I, I just fundamentally disagreed with that. And where this really feels like the slavery is this like it overbearing evil force <laughs> that our, our our characters are rebelling against, yes, and treating as a problem, and the characters who are perpetuating that slavery as being the problem ones, yeah. Um, I, I said it on Discord, right? Like. Any, Michaela, Michaela thank, thank you for that you super chat for saying hi to my mom. <laughs> That's their first super chat on the stream. Um, I, I think that any time you start your book by having a, a slaver who uh, is sexually assaulting young women uh, get uh, burnt to a crisp, I'm I'm in. You know what I mean? Well, like, and I opened the book and I was just like, babe. Well, let's talk about the prologue. Let's start at the beginning. Let's start. At we the both beginning. really like it. There, I I I don't need, I don't know how I'm going to find a low today. I think that this is really good. Um, yeah, but um, I don't know either. No, I opened the book. I started reading first, and I was like, "Babe, this book is about slavery." Mm-hmm. And you were like, "No," <laughs> like, I, like I, I, you know, I, I didn't even like, I, yeah, I, I barely opened it, and I was like, "Fuck!" Has our chat trolled us? Yeah. Like, was this the fucking long con of the century? Well, it starts from the <laughs> POV of a slaver. Which yeah, yeah, was yeah. really, I was like, oh my god, are we going like, to have, no. like, is this trusting guy going to be the character, are we going to follow him the whole fucking book as he's just, like, sexually assaulting people? Yeah. Like, it was a little rough. And then, uh, no, no, he's fucking he's dead. dead. He's is He's dead. He's oh, great. also, dead. that cat for kids, that cat for kids timer, don't know why it's still going. We're going to have to figure out where that's coming from, because I, I turned it off. stream elements and it's just yeah, still, sorry, it's still going. Uh, so it, it was kind of a weird beginning, because I was like, oh no, like... I don't want to spend the next two years talking about this again. Yeah. And being like, eh. And then immediately I was like, oh, no, this is great. Yeah. 
We love to see it. We love to see it. Uh, so Tresting is a minor lord in the north mm -hmm. who has a plantation. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, it, it is interesting the the way in which this feels not like um, the American um, system. This felt very much inspired by Haiti. Uh, and the system of uh, the the slavery system that uh, was in place there until the Haitian Revolution. Yeah. Uh, this this book felt very inspired by the this, the what happened in Haiti uh, and uh, what is still happening. Hey, French people, fuck off. Uh, <laughs> stop. Just just l slavery bad. Well, no. Hunt so so I, I, can I get political for one second? You really quickly. Definitely can, but I don't want to say thank you to Gordon for that. Super. Gordon Chen, thank you for that super chat. Super duper chat. Mistborn is my favorite trilogy. Glad you guys are enjoying it so far. Also very excited for all your other projects coming up this year. Thank you, Gordon. Gordon, thank You're you too so sweet. much. Oh my god. Um, one of the big problems in Haiti is, uh, and I just want to bring some attention to this. Uh, the when when the Haitian Revolution happened, uh, the when it ended, right? The community at large, for some reason, the global community decided that Haiti was going to owe a debt to the French people for all of the slaves that they lost and the income that they lost in losing their control over Haiti. Uh, that debt is still crippling the Haitian economy to this day uh, and is a black spot on the international community that should absolutely be abolished uh, and all that money should be given back to the Haitians. It is insane to me that at any point we thought it was okay for the Haitians to free themselves from French rule and then have to pay the French to be free. It's fucking disgusting. The UN should do something about it every day and I will never stop talking about this because uh hey france absurd. fuck off like you don't you don't deserve that money mm -hmm. the haitians do the haitian economy is in the toilet and it's not because haitians are lazy or not hardworking or they don't have any resources it's because they are forced by the international community to give it to you because you guys were fucking awful so <laughs> i um yeah i i was thinking a lot about haiti while reading this book fair uh and it made me angry because i as much as i do speak french i uh hate that this is something that exists and i think that um there there's no reason for it to if you want money france make it yourself instead of benefiting off of your colonialism all this time later when you what don't fucking deserve any of it what um, a concept yeah I, I i feel rather strongly about that uh and if you okay. disagree with me I, how in what <laughs> world does that does what's what's happening in trusting, Haiti make sense trusting might disagree with you but he's dead so fuck him um yeah. we've got some uh two new members at the nerd table that i just no say. way kyle Hello, bishop thank kyle you bishop and matthew s yeah we appreciate you uh, thanks for being here uh yeah, arzu crazy. says the un exists to perpetuate the power of the already powerful what what in this economy you can't trust the systems of government in the world um i'm gonna start sounding like a crackpot but uh that one just really pisses me off Fair. Um, you know what? Fair. But 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 I thought it was relevant here. I thought like the the plantation slavery and the um, the way in which this system uses the obligators and uh, this system of slavery really felt like all of the. Uh, sorry, I studied Haiti uh, and what happened there in college, so I have a lot of opinions about it because I was eighteen when I learned about it, which is a very impressionable age. Uh, the uh, this just really reminded me of that, and yeah. immediately I was very like, I want trusting to die violently. <laughs> I want him to be murdered well, aggressively. Uh, and then we uh, we cut over to the the um, hut uh, where the Ska live, and we're introduced for the first time to the good guys in the series, uh, the slave class of this society. Mm -hmm. And um, we're introduced to Kelsier. What was your first opinion of our boy? Um, uh, well, I don't. First opinion was like. Interesting, because mm -hmm. I, I, like, when I, I read the prologue, and I didn't think he would come back for a while. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 no, I thought the same thing. I was like, yeah. oh, he's going to be like, he's going to be like Aragorn, and um, our characters are going to, like, run into him at a bar in, like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, after yeah. the story starts. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I definitely thought he wouldn't show up for a while. I was wrong. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Always wrong. Um, and... Yeah, he's interesting because he's such, he's, he's so hurt. Yeah. <laughs> he is not well, yeah. um, but he is the person who is the best at, at hiding that and not letting other people see it. And um, 
I I have some strong feelings about him, which I want to get to at the end of the section. Great. Yeah. Um, but I have some predictions and strong feelings about his character. Uh, Isherice, thank you so much for that super duper chat. Let's I came go. for this Mistborn, but I stayed for the denigration of benefiting from colonialism. Let's go. Let's go. Hell I yeah. agree. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. Let's super dismantle chat. the whole system. Um, just, just the whole thing in the trash. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think uh, he, his introduction is so fascinating because he feels... He he doesn't feel like a character at first. Yeah, that's why it's like, oh, he'll enters the later. story as a myth. Mm-hmm. And what's, what's so fun about him is that this first section really builds and breaks that myth in equal parts, in my opinion. And you get this kind of character who the the story about him is so large Mm -hmm. and also the story about him should be large right yeah what he has done is amazing what he's capable of is amazing and he is the only person to have survived the pits i I believe that we know of yeah that we know of that they believe And, and the reason for that is really cool which we'll get to later um i still you know what i still don't understand it but i i'm into it what do you mean you don't understand it i don't understand We'll get to it. We'll get to it. How he survived? Yeah. Oh, we don't know yet. Oh, okay. You were like, oh, okay. I you thought you meant why. I thought you meant the why. Why? Oh, yeah. No, no. Like the why they kill people. Here, look, this book is very dark. So we're going to be talking about some very dark stuff today. We should probably put a trigger warning on all of these episodes. Fair. But but the the this is a society where the the bad guys feel bad in a way that I'm like, oh, they, they make sense. You yep. don't want half breed people, or like you don't want half ska half <laughs> because they can have magic powers. So you kill the women that you are sexually assaulting, and like that yeah. is awful. Don't get me wrong; it's it's deplorable. But if you're trying to maintain fascism in your society, these are the things that you actually do have to do. And the the reality of this book, because some fantasy series go halfway with that side of it; they don't want to get too dark, so they kind of skirt around it. Yeah, this book puts it on front street. But points at it as being a problem, right? Points at it as, like, I want to talk about fascism, and so I have to go all the way in on the fascism. Yeah. In a way that I, I respect it for. I think that it really works, and it allows for the desire for hope mm-hmm. to feel as strong as it does, which is the, like, bright spot that pulls you through some of the really rough parts of this. Right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so Kelsey shows up. And uh, he, he he gives the Ska some food mm-hmm. and uh, basically is, he's like, a, he's like a walking legend among them. And he tells yeah. them straight up, he's there to, to cause trouble. Yeah, like the survivor he, of Hathson. Yeah, he lets them know exactly why he's there and kind of hints at what he expects from them. Um, and then they hear screaming outside. Yeah. And uh, everyone in the the hovel, I think it, they're they're called. Sure. The, yeah, they're little. I don't, I don't know. Guys, should I answer a phone call from a telemarketer? It says telemarketer. I love that for you. Um, yeah, they they hear screams, and everyone inside is like, "Oh yeah, that poor girl. Um, she was too pretty, and so she's gonna get raped and die." Um, yeah. And I was like, "Holy fuck!" And Kelsey was like. Mm. I'm going to do something about that. And he walks off into the mist, which the mist is in itself almost a character in these books because there's like the, the all this superstition around it. There's all this fear around it, which yeah. some is like kind of true, but also not true. Like the, 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 what are they called? Mist wraiths are like actually a thing, but they're not what people think it is. Um, which is very fun. Look, Waffles, I, I really love this comment. I think the weight of the darkness in the book is why they needed to open with Kelsey or freeing people so that you know there's something to pull you through. Well, and this is this goes back fair. to the trusting thing. Yeah, when fair. it was introduced with a POV of a slaver, I was like, oh, I don't know that I want to read this. Right. That slaver is dead in that chapter. To let you know this book is about dismantling the system, yeah. come on the ride of dismantling the system with yes. me. Right? And unfortunately, in order to have the system there that you want to see dismantled, it has to be awful. Mm-hmm. And it is. It's a terrible system. These characters are surrounded by truly evil people. Yeah. And not evil magically, which I appreciate. They are just evil. Yeah. They're not working for a devil. They are evil because they are corrupt around a central figure that is allowing them to be evil because he wants his society to be this, right? Mm-hmm. And so the, the the opening of this book, both introducing something that I don't really want to read about, but ending by it being about dismantling that thing I don't want to read about, that is 
awesome. To yeah, me. yeah. Like that's a journey that I am like happy to hop on the roller coaster for. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you kind of need you need the prologue to kind of end with that. And I'm very happy because otherwise it's like how long? How long is this just going to be bleak for? And I think yeah. that some writers make that mistake of being like, I, this book is about dismantling the system, but the system is. I'm just going to describe the system for 400 pages, sure. and then I'm going to dismantle it in the last hundred pages of the book. Sure. And it's like you can't. You have to give your audience a tether to the idea that this system is going to be dismantled because that there's hope nothing else happens really for the good guys like they he steals a little bit of metal from the one place but there's not a lot of other hopeful moments in the rest of this section yeah it's pretty bleak and what they're going through is tough and so by by putting it just at the end of the prologue when you go into introducing vin in the world that she's living in there is that like narrative promise from the author to the reader that yes Vin's life is terrible but this book is not about the pain that she's suffering it is about how she gets out of it yeah and you know that that's coming because it's already kind of happened far away in the prologue there, there yeah the the fact that there is hope there is very refreshing I, I honestly I love it I love that the prologue mentions Renault <clears throat> Renew Renow Lord Renew uh no. uh, uh already um, like, I, 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 like I said, I re-listened to, like, the first little, like, bit of it last night, so I was able to be like, oh, it's that guy, you yeah. know? Um, which, I love those moments, which is why okay. the rules of spoilers are as they are. Let's, let's get into it. Yeah. What, 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 what do you think makes him, why is, why, why do they not want to share how he looks like the guy? <clears throat> I... I don't know. Okay, so there's obviously Allomancy in this world, which yeah. is like a system of like kind of like magical ability. Very, very cool. There is clearly other magics yeah. that like we don't know about, like the um, terrorists. Sazeds. Yeah. yeah, like his the, metal mind, the, which yeah. I was like, that is the most Marvel comics. <laughs> no, it's Mega Mind. We've got to have uh, Metal Mind fight with Spider Man, Excelsior. Yeah, it's yeah. There's there's definitely other magic things, and whether or not they're related to Alamancy, we'll find out. I I don't know, mm -hmm. but th there's 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 other shit going on there, and I think that maybe. But what do you think it is? Make a bold prediction. I think that Sazed has something to do with Renault. Oh, interesting. Okay. Because Sazed seems to have all of the knowledge. I was all of it, and <laughs> he. I I think he knows a ritual. Like there's like a very dark something or other that's like maybe if you knew what it was, you'd be like, "What the fuck? I'm out." Can I can I give you my bold prediction? Yes, please go for it. I think that the way that it works is Kelsier stood between the two of them, mm -hmm. the the dying Lord Renew and the person who replaced him, and he pulled with the. Um, he pulled the emotional intelligence out of one and pushed it into the other at the same time. And so that's why this Lord Renew has the, like, knowledge of, like, two years ago. And it's because he literally, or four years ago, sorry, before Hatson, he, before he escaped Hatson. Yeah. I think that he is literally, like, using the push-pull of the emotional mental allomancy to pull the personality out of one and push it into another at the same time. Interesting. I don't know if that's true. So it's I just actually think that, like, Renault's body. No, 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 no. I think that. Well, ooh. Like it's his body that, and and like they have basically like body swapped him in a way. Oh, I I hadn't thought about it that way, but that's cool. Well, that, I mean, that's just kind of what it sounds like from your. The Sky thing. Goat. Thank you so much. I don't know what that currency symbol is. No idea, but thank you for that thank super you, that's chat. Super we appreciate um, it. Although I disagree with you 70% of the time in Wheel of Time, I really sure. love the way you guys think. So excited for this trilogy. I love Kelsier. Here's my fave. I get that. Thank you so I'm much. I'm more of a Vin guy, but um, I, I, get, I, get, I get the it. Kelsier love. I, yeah, 100%. If, if there was someone I could play in this world, I would play Kelsier. I yes. feel like that like smiley, but like uh, smile that had to pay. I feel like I could nail this. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Brandon, call me. Um, <laughs> hey, Brandon. <laughs> Brandon, we're world Brandy chums. Sandy. World, world sure, friends. Sure, sure, sure. We'll call up the innkeeper. Just don't watch uh, me talk about a memory of light. Um, Here's the thing. I, you know what? I that's think the I Indian can... rupee symbol. Oh, cool. I want to go to that's India fun. so bad. I fucking love Indian food. I, I don't. <laughs> Sorry. Because you couldn't eat there. I couldn't eat there. And yeah, I, yeah, I would burn to a crisp. Yeah, so I'm curious to see where that's going. Because it, it, it's got to be something awful. But... Yes. 
I feel like, yeah, it's got to be something about stealing memories or stealing a mind or... I love that idea because yeah. I was sitting there and I was like, what the fuck? I was like, I have no idea. Like, it seems like... At first I thought maybe it had something to do with the mist. Because here's yeah. the thing. Kelsier makes a, like, very offhand comment okay. um, in the very beginning yeah. um, about his soul. Yeah. And like, oh, if only you knew what, ha oh, if only you knew the truth of it. Yeah. And so I definitely think that there has to be some kind of allomancy that is related to like, to, to the soul and, and maybe connects like Lord Renault to this weird like body swap do you think, magic. I don't know. Do you think that it is the, uh, do you think that it is the ninth medal? Maybe. Um, AMV fan, thank you so much for that super chat. Just want to say thank you. Cosmere audiobooks are narrated by Michael Kramer. Yes. And Kate Redding, except Warbreaker and Sunlit Man. Yeah, as soon as I heard Michael Kramer's voice, I was like, oh, hell yeah. Um, I would not be a good breeze. I'm not, I'm not poncy enough. You need someone like, um, who would be a good breeze? You need someone who has a little bit more of that sophistication, which is not typically what I play. I play a little bit grungier. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. You can act, so you, know you can would, play any of them. You know who I think would actually be a really good breeze? Who? Is the guy who plays Helmeppo on uh, One Piece. I th if he took the... If he took the... <gasps> oh, God. If he <laughs> no, no, but if he took the, like... If he had a real haircut? Well, that, but if he took the, um, the, the upper lip and he made it a little smarmier and a little less pathetic... And I see, think that he could really crush that role. That's why I was thinking like Timothy Chalamet kind of vibe. For Barry? For Barry Breeze. Breeze. Yeah, he's got he's got that like so snarky. Dislikes. He's too no, small. Yeah, I don't know. He's, Breeze doesn't seem large. Honestly, to me, Timothy but. Chalamet could play Vin. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Um, yeah, I don't know. Renault, and have Zendaya be Kelsier. Renault is such a fascinating <laughs> character. I don't think it has anything to do with the ninth medal. I think that we know that the tenth, that the that the tenth medal is seeing forwards in time. And since everything seems to be opposites, I think that the ninth medal has to see with do, do with seeing the past. You know what's gonna happen? What? Timothy Chalamet is gonna play Ellen uh, Venture. Venture. He's gonna be the yes. like. He's gonna be up there reading a book during the party. Yes. No. And Absolutely. Zendaya. Zendaya's gonna be uh, Vin. Zendaya. You know what? Honestly, down for that. Well, that I sounds feel, great. I feel like the way that they would do this in live action is to have the ska. It, like, if they wanted to make it very poignant, have the ska be black, have the nobles be white, and then mm -hmm. cast the Mistborn as mixed race. And so you would have Zendaya, mm. uh, and you would have. It would be a little bit hard to do because how do you hide that you're mixed race? Um, yeah. You'd have I, to be, like, very white passing, but... Yeah, I don't know if you could make that work. Because, yeah, you'd just you'd be fucking murdered on the spot. You know Austin what I mean? Arminio says, my Ellen Cassie is Huey from The Boys. Okay, look, look, look. Okay. This guy has to stop being in fucking everything. I need a break, okay? He's in every... I, mean, I cannot get away from Jack Quaid. He I've is only in, seen him in The Boys. Okay, he is in The Boys. He is the voice of the guy on Lower Decks. He is oh, the voice yeah. of Superman in the, Avenger, the New Adventures of Superman cartoon. Oh. He's in the Scream 5 movie. Jack Quaid is in fucking... Okay. And, and, and I'm, I'm not actually that upset about it because I think he's a fantastic <laughs> actor. Mm -hmm. But Jack Quaid is in fucking everything. He's also right. a little too old for Ellen. I would want Ellen to be like 16, not 30. Uh, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Especially since there seemed to be something gone on there. Arzu! Arzu, thank you for those five gifted membos. Thank you so much. So much green in this chat. Let's go. Uh, Austin Arminio says, I actually like that they make it explicit in the prologue that it is non-race-based slavery. I don't understand what you mean by that. Because it is definitely ethnicity-based. It's not. No, they, 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 they all look like they're. There's no, like, look. Of the ska and like look like there's not like a skin color or anything like that. Sure, but at the same time, it's 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 based on who your parents are. Arzu, thank you for those memos. Yeah, like, but here's like, the thing: it, it's it's still ethnicity based because the it's ska not. are not. So 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 the Lord Ruler a thousand years ago. Yes. Picked his favorites to be the nobles. Yeah. And his favorites didn't all have to be white, right? They could be literally any. Uh, no. So the, the, the problem yeah. with the problem with what you're saying uh -huh. is that the ska 
so the the people who were following the the Lord Ruler yeah. are following him because he is a sliver of God. Yes. And the people who do not follow him did not follow him for religious reasons, and so they are ethno religions essentially at this point. And so it's it, it is the same. It, they are essentially the Jews in Nazi Germany. Like ethnically, yes, they're all white, but the Jews uh, by that point are are an ethnicity in that they have been subjugated and kept to their own people. And so genetically, like, you have that element of it where after a thousand years of forcing these people to only breed within their own, like, castes, yeah. you have created an ethno-religion. Sure, but it's not going to be only one sect of people who followed him. Like, we don't, we just don't know that... It... See, but I don't, I don't know that that's true because terrorist people have, like, a visually distinct way of being, right? So the... Yeah, because he hates them. Yeah... Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know either, and it's not, it's explained, that's why in my yeah. head, like, there was no, like, it was very, um, like, gray, you know? Uh, look, Warworld says the racism is fantasy racism and not real-world racism reasons. Oh, I agree with that 100%. Sure. I'm just saying that when you, when you want to get into, like, casting it, and when you want to, like, make a point with your, the, you know, lean into it, you, there, the, the, there is an easy way to lean into it by just making it, putting real-world racism on it. Um, I don't know that that's necessarily what they would do, just because I think that you the being able to hide among the upper crust society. I would think be you're tough. Yeah, I think they'll probably end up going more with what Shadow and Bone did, mm -hmm. um, where you just kind of have like a, a gender blind cast uh, that is race blind. Or sorry, race blind cast. Yeah. I also think gender blind. I think a lot of the main crew, if you were to do it in live action, a lot of the main crew would be women. Um, you, yeah, you could. I mean, there's no. just too there's just too many men in this book uh, for 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 a live action portrayal. Yeah, the executives would be like, "We need." <laughs> well, I just nobody's making nobody's making this kind of content right now. Um, sure. Where it's just like six men and one teenage girl. Yeah, but I, honestly, like, I think that that dynamic is really interesting. And sure. So I, yeah, they're just nobody's doing it. You sure? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. That would not get like picked up. Everyone, they'd be like, "Oh, it has to be such and such a way for sure." Yeah. Um, Brian, welcome back to the nerd table. Um, uh, Bogdan Pekanik says even Sanderson thinks that it is too male heavy. Yeah, sure, I, I'm, sure. and I'm not surprised. I think Brandon Sanderson is, um, uh, the way he speaks now, I have a feeling that he looks back on his early work and is like, there's things I would change because that's how all authors are, right? People grow, you know. Uh, Brian, thank you so much. Welcome back to the nerd table. I think Jack Quaid could pull, should pull an Eddie Murphy and play all of the main cast, the entire crew, <laughs> Kelsier Van Ham, everybody nerdy would love it. No, 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 fuck that. Eddie Murphy should play the entire main cast. <laughs> Have Eddie Murphy come in and play Kelsier Van Ham Breeze. Uh, he's probably fucking long retired by now. You Eddie Murphy? Like, yeah. No, Eddie Murphy still works. Uh, the Sky Go, thank you for that super chat. It's more similar to casteism than racism. Yeah, that's fair. For and I, I think that that's why I said the word cast is because it kind of came to mind. There's an element of it that eventually those cat the, the longer you keep those casts from breeding together, the more separated they will be. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Anyway... Yeah, sorry, we got distracted by Lord Renault because I, I really want to know what happens there. But we don't know yet. Um, should we get into chapter one? It's interesting. I Just before we get into chapter one, I just want to say this. Uh, uh -huh. It's interesting that we talk about Brandon Sanderson. Like, Look Waffle says Brando is 1,000% well, someone who has grown a lot since writing his older stuff. I agree with that. But also, this is this is really good. It is. Like, yes, yeah, like I could use a few more female characters, but um, the, the, the writing is really good. Yes, yeah. yes, Abs absolutely, <clears throat> absolutely. Um, all right. Eddie Murphy should play Huey in the next season of The Boys. Fuck off. Uh, <laughs> and only the next season and have Jack Quaid come back the season after. We'll be like, what the fuck happened? Um, That's so funny. <laughs> we get to part one, chapter one. Uh, yep. Part one, chapter one. And we meet our main character, I think, Vin. Hi. I, they're, they're both the main characters. Sure, I mean, the yeah. PO, there's, they both have POVs in every chapter yes, that we've yes, read. Yes, yes, yes. I think. Um, I might go on where they don't both, but... Yes, we meet Vin, who's part of a thieving crew. Uh, her brother left her, was like, everyone's going to betray you, so I'm going to betray you, and fucked off. Uh, yeah. <laughs> basically. Do you think he fucked off, or is he dead? I think he fucked off. Hmm. I don't think so. Really? Yeah, I think that there's some... I, I, I think that there's something else there, because mm -hmm. I don't think that... I think that he knew how valuable his sister was, and I don't think he would have really? just left the only person he could trust behind for no reason at all. So I, th I, I don't know. I think that we're going to find out that there's something more going on with Reen and that the reason why he left is either that 
Uh, Wait, you said you thought he is dead. Or there's like a reason he fucked off that doesn't have to do with oh for sure yeah betraying her yeah 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 yeah. Um, because I think like maybe Cayman figured out how valuable Vin was because Cayman knew as we find out from the post torture scene. Cayman knew. Cayman knew, and so I keep wanting to say Camelin, uh, but Cayman knew, and so I think that either Cayman made him leave or Cayman killed him in order to keep Vin nearby. Right, because because Reen is uh, insistent on moving from place to place and not like settling in, and Cayman might have been like, uh, I know I understand what Vin is, and so I'm gonna kill you to keep her here because she mm-hmm. won't leave without you. That's interesting. Yeah. I think that's that's absolutely fair. I, I just I feel like it's I feel like the who betrayed Kelsier and why did uh, Reen leave are both gonna be way more complicated than we think they are. I don't think anyone betrayed Kelsier. I think someone did. Okay, I don't. I think it's one of the I think it's one of the people they're working with right now. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, Sky Goat, welcome to the nerd table. Let's Thank you, go. Sky Goat. Um, yeah. So there's a there's a ploy going on. They're trying to scam some money, and mm-hmm. uh, Vin is like, I have this thing called luck, and I just like you know push push it a little bit, um, and I get lucky. Yeah. <laughs> I and I was like, oh, interesting. That'll come back later, and then it's, like, explained in this section, so it's fine. Well, and I I was like, oh my god, how many magic systems does this world have? Because Hatson, we kind of get introduced to Hatson's magic idea in the beginning. Um, so, to then she comes in with Hat- luck. The, the Hatson. Sorry, Kelsier. Oh, sorry. Um, the Hatson. survivor of Hatson. Right. I keep thinking his name is Kelsier Hatson, mm-hmm. and that's not what his name is. Hatson oh. is a place where his wife died. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Very so uh, I was a little bit like, oh, another magic system already. This is going to get complicated. And it isn't. And I'm grateful for that. Yes. Although I do think there are other magic systems. Yes. But our two main characters have the same one. Yeah. And not two vast. We're not ways introduced of, yeah, to yeah. two different ones at the very beginning being like, oh my God, so many words. How I don't think we will really understand what Sazed can do until like book three. You know what I mean? Like it'll, it'll stay mostly with the Alamancy and we'll get like teases of Sazed for a bit and then there's going to be a big moment in the final part of this trilogy mm. where Sazed comes out swinging and we're like, oh, I get it now. Mm. You know, for the fun reveal. The, the fun reveal. And I think that his thing is also Alamancy. It's just a different form from a different culture, right? Well, like I think is... that his is more like the Windfinders versus the Aes I- Sedai than it being a different kind of magic because mm. he calls it a metal mind. Yeah, I had to use a whole metal mind for this implies alamancy, but just a different. Form. Yeah, because it comes from metals. Yeah, so it has to be related in in some way for sure. Uh, so Vin um is doing a little scam with Cayman, uh, and they uh, they go to an obligator. Really cool name for the, like, bad guys. Yeah. I like Obligator a lot. Yeah. Inquisitor is a little bit, you know, Steel Inquisitor's cool. But, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, everybody yeah. has Inquisitors. Uh, but Obligator, I was like, fuck, that's a great word. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to take down a fucking Obligator. I don't know. <laughs> I was like, I, I love when I love when the bad guys have a really cool word. Yeah. That isn't, like, super overdone. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something that Forsaken needed. They needed a better word. I didn't, didn't mind Forsaken. I don't mind it, but it's just kind of, it's it's one of those ones where you're like, yeah, they're Forsaken. Everybody's Forsaken and something. But like, sure. Obligator's like new to me. And I was like, mm, I like Nerdy the way it feels words. in my mouth. I do. I like words. Yeah. We have a book club. I'm <laughs> dyslexic. What? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so, uh, yeah. So we see, we, we meet Vin. Cool character. Mm-hmm. Um, the way that she interacts with the world is fascinating. It's so sad. It is sad, but it's like, it is, she's an incredible actress. Yeah. Um, I'm into, I'm really, I'm really into her as a character and how she's, she's being written. Um, and then we go back to Kelsier right away. Yeah. <laughs> right away. We find him again. He meets with Docs. What's Docson? Docson. Docson. They, uh, they meet up and they're like, hey, we got a meeting. Very fun. Um... And Dachshund's like, I want to show you something before we do the meeting for this big thing that's going to happen. Big, big thing. Big project. Big big, big project. Big project. Uh, group project where someone's going to definitely not do their work in Slack and you just have to make up for it. I don't know. I don't. I, I think that this is an adult group project where everyone does the work. Hopefully. Um, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, so, yeah. So, they go to... Is that the same person? Yeah. Hi. Cool. They hung up on you. That's rude. It's fucking rude. They're probably like, oh, shit, I called that number already. <laughs> hey, I tried to give him my time. 
You did. I was going to put them on speaker. It was going to be hilarious. Oh, God. Unless they're like, do you live at... Redacted. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, uh, Doxon uh, shows Kelsier Vin because um, she's kind of gotten a reputation for herself, even though she doesn't know what she's doing. Um, and she doesn't think... Well, we don't know that at Cameron... first. We just know they're going to a meeting. And we cut to Vin and Cayman as yes. they go into the... So, basically, Cayman's plan is this guy, Farron... I think Thrawn, Thr- whatever. Thrawn, so, e- em- Emperor Thrawn. Grand Admiral Thrawn. Yeah, that's uh, right. comes to Cayman and yeah. is like, "Yo, dude, uh, here's our here's our plan. We are going to pretend to be nobles, which apparently is how every plan in this world works. Yeah. You just pretend to be nobles because uh, otherwise you can't do anything. It it really is a genuinely a fake it till you make it situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Loose Theron, yes. Yes, Loose Theron. Theron. Goes to Camelin. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the, every every single plan in Mistborn is fake until you make it. You pretend to be a noble. You, they're going to underbid other people's bids on transporting the uh, young obligators from the north down for to their, Luthadel like, final for their training. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the plan is to, uh, be because they found out that those young obligators carry a bunch of money with them, uh-huh. so they're going to essentially plan to get robbed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so Cayman Ka- is like, I want to cut out Luce Theron, so I'm going to go behind his back and go make this deal and run away with 3,000 boxings. Mm. Um yeah, yeah, he's gonna scam the guy who set up the deal yeah. before the deal has even happened. So the first, um, the first obligator they meet uh, is not there though. They go and they meet a high obligator, and so they're in this Lots room. Lots of tattoos. And then like uses her luck, uh, and the guy's like, "Yeah, awesome. Go, go get your three thousand boxings. We'll see you later. This, yep. this sounds great. Awesome plan." And Vin. Uh, what I love about Vin is that she does not have a magical ability to sense danger. Yeah, but she she's like has been raised wrong. in a world where her whole life is danger. Yeah, and so she, because at first I was like, oh, does she is she prophetic? But I, I really don't think she is prophetic. I think that she is just so her life has been so miserable. Yeah, that she has that sense that I don't have. Right, like I am not good at that, but I'm I have, fr- you know, man. I have friends who've grown up in like in in situations that have led to them being able to just immediately be like, something's wrong here. Yeah, and I'm like, are you sure? And they're like, yes. And I'm like, I trust you because I'm doing great. Yeah. Um, and Ska- I, Scafani, welcome to the nerd table. I I thought that um, th- her just having this innate sense of like we we have to go, like we yeah. we there's there's She's like, something. This is fucked. This is fucked. Somebody's watching me. Something has gone wrong. We need to get out of here. Yeah. Um and. It's it's really cool. I, I think that um, I think the way that she her internal monologue is written is is heartbreaking constantly. But there is uh, there's something about it that I really I, I just I I yeah. find so in, enrapturing about her mind. There was like a sentence later on where someone enters the room and Vin is like, obviously she positioned herself so she could see both of the doors so she didn't have to turn to to yeah. look at who entered. And I was like, yeah, obviously. <laughs> Which is not something I would think of, but I'm like, it makes total sense. Well, and, and this is like, this is a character who is constantly using her magical power to stop men from being inappropriate with her. Yeah. Which is just like... What a world. What? <laughs> and it goes... I, the, the, when she said that, it reminded me so much of in Aragon, the first book, when Arya uh, is like, Nigel I lost Lines. my magical powers, but I had just enough to make sure that they couldn't get hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh my god, Arya's an Alamancer. Yeah. No, she literally is like, I made it, I made it so that their dicks were soft. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and com- oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and I was like, that's so funny. Vin and Vin and Arya would be good friends. I ag- I agree. I think Vin they needs be- Arya. Honestly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Vin needs love. Um. <laughs> but also, I I love setting up that the obligators are patient villains, where yeah. they th- this high obligator is like, okay, that's an Alamancer. We need to send the Steel Inquisitors after them. When they get home and we can get the whole nest. Yeah. Like, this isn't a world where the doors shut automatically. They're and... not dramatic for the sake of, I don't know, like... Well, it's not even drama, right? It, it is valuable to catch them there because there's no chance of them getting away. Because she does get away, right? Um, yeah. But it is the element of it that, like, they're... It's the gamble. They're thinking big picture. Yes. Which, to Always. me, sets the stakes very high. Yeah. When you tell me right away, oh, no, 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 the bad guys are good at what they do. Yes. The, the fascism in this world exists because the bad guys are good at it. They, are, they, they, they don't scary. fuck around. Yeah. 
I, 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 which I'm, we find out later, they're very good at it. They're very good at it, and it makes the successes that our heroes have more satisfying for me as a reader. Absolutely. While also making the tension build up when they go on missions. Every time Kelsier goes and stands on a roof, I'm going to be nervous because it means that something bad might happen in the next chapter. Yeah. Right? And that Things is... Things go wrong. It's set up so quickly in this book that I'm like, the stakes are raging right from the beginning. Yeah. The stakes for Vin of just not being given to a whorehouse are so high immediately. Yeah. And then that stake gets passed off for... We have to take down the country. Are they the same stake? No, but this the tension in both of them is so high that this book is just you fly through it. Yeah. Right. You're going boom, 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 boom because there's the the characters make strong choices. Uh -huh. They're 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 indecisive and they're convinced for solid reasons. Mm -hmm. Like there's so much going on here that I'm like, this is fucking great writing. You know what also is interesting that I'm just kind of realizing is that um, they haven't introduced the trope of the like the tea that makes you not pregnant. The, like, you know, fantasy, like, people oh, can have yeah, sex yeah. and we don't have to There's worry no about it. There's no birth control in Cosmere. No, no, no. Well, because otherwise that's what, like, the nobles would be doing with the, whoever they were fucking around with. Um, but that that doesn't seem to exist in this world, which mm -hmm. makes the situation more dire. Um, um, Pondering Book says the way they don't mind waiting is definitely more ominous feeling than if they immediately jump to strike. Absolutely. That, and it gives the book the opportunity to set up just how scary the Steel Inquisitors are, that Kelsier... Because Kelsier and Doxen, they're seeing Vin, uh, they leave, Kelsier's like, she is a misting. She might be more than that. Yep. Uh, okay. Yes, she's she is ballsy enough to do this to a high obligator. Or she doesn't know. That bitch know. is crazy. <laughs> or she doesn't know. They're like, there is a chance yeah, yeah. that she's doing it subconsciously. And Doxon is like, that's possible. And he's like, yeah. We also, um, the, 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 first, the prologue really sets up that he is a protector of women. Uh, and so, the, and then I mean, he his sees. Wife died. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so. and, he's, and Kelsier's a good man. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. The, the this gives it, by making him look at Vin and go, "Oh, I'm going to do awful things to Cayman," and he does. Uh, very interesting. But they leave, and Kelsier is like, "Okay, I'm going to distract the Steel Inquisitor," and Doxin is like, "Wait, what He's the, like, I beg your the pardon. Fuck you are. He's like, "No, no, I'm not going to fight him. I'm just going to like, no, no, no. Don't yeah. worry. I'm not going to fight the guy. I'm not crazy." Yeah. Setting up the Steel Inquisitors as being that scary and, is like, a great opportunity in this moment. The physical description of them. Yeah fucked up like that i want to but also don't want to see in live action you know what mm -hmm. i mean like oh i think i know why the spikes are in their eyes oh yeah yeah it's to they can't be soothed or pushed mm -hmm. i think that the the spikes are driven into their eyes so that they are hitting the part of the brain that the allomancy um, would affect their emotions. Maybe they don't have emotions anymore then. Yes. Yeah, I, it's I think, like a lobotomy, but I, you I, can see it. A hundred percent. I, I absolutely okay. think it is the spikes are hitting that so that they are immune to... Because they. It, I, I think that they're all seekers. I, they might all be Mistborn. I don't know. Some of them have to be, right? The one that well, chases... there's only a couple. There's 20. Yeah, there's only 20 of them. And so, yeah, so they have to be exceedingly rare. They, they might all be Mistborn. The one that chases... Um, the one that chases Vin on the roof has yeah. to be. Yeah, because he used uh, ATM. I think that all Mistings can use ATM. Yeah. Or but, no, no, Mistborn. No, Mistings can only use one of the ten No, they can things. only use one of the eight metals. Of the eight. But I think they can all use ATM. Oh, so you... so. I so, might be wrong about that, though. So there's no Misting that's, like, just ATM or the ninth one, I think. Maybe I don't. Know I yet. love that they haven't brought up the ninth medal yet. I'm like, because I'm like, fun. I want to know what is the ninth medal. <laughs> I think it's got to be the opposite of the seeing the future. It's got to be the. Do past. you think the eleventh medal is a thing, or is it just a lie that he came up with to get people to give people hope so that they join the army? Um. Well, it is very clearly a medal that nobody has seen before. Sure. But whether or not it is actually the weakness of the Lord Ruler, but no. is it an alimantic medal or is it just a lie? To spread rumors to give people hope. I think that it is partially a lie. Because I don't... Because Kelsier going... We're talking about this so out of order. I Guys, Sorry. this book is really good. Yeah. It's a little chaotic, but... Um, okay, so Mistings, Mistings can only use one. Mistborn's all. So if you... The ad, Adium is... Wait, why is this not working? It's uh, dying. You need to plug oh. it in. Um, so, okay. Cool, 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 cool. All right. 
Uh, Mistings can only use one metal. So are there Adium only Mistings? Dennis wants to know what uh, what it, what kind of skin tone I am. Oh God. Uh, white. Um, white. No, that's not enough. White. Uh, ghost. Um, wow. Transparent. <laughs> Alabaster. Uh, Alabaster's good. I had a guy. Ivory's pretty when I, good. When I worked at Sous Chalet, some guy was like, your skin is beautiful. And I was like, oh, thanks. I'm really pale. He's like, no, you're not pale. You're alabaster. And I was like, sir, you need to step away. <laughs> like, I was like, you need, you need to, to, you need to take a moment. There's a bathroom over there. Uh, <laughs> uh okay. So, um, oh God. So, uh, yeah, so, so that happens. Kelsier f- distracts the Inquisitor. We cut back to Vin. They're, they make it back to the lair. Uh, reading this book made me want to lair really badly. Uh, I want a lair? I want a lair with secret entrances and okay. hidey holes and peep holes so I can watch people through the walls. Mm-hmm. Um, do I actually need them? No. Do I want it? Yes. This book made me really want a lair so badly. <laughs> Great. Can someone uh, get us a lair? You know what? If we move to LA, we rent a studio that will be our lair oh we could have a lair we could could call it the lair that's so cool the nerdy nightly lair yeah oh man guys um if we are talking about things in the book don't confirm or deny our suspicions please and thank you yeah appreciate it i know you are all just as excited as we are maybe more excited that's possible i i totally get it just put down the popcorn emote. Just just, just popcorn it. Then yeah. we'll read and find out. Because we'll, uh, we'll get there, I promise. Daily, thank you for the super chat. Thank you for the super this chat. is everything I wanted from Book Club back to the early days with the theories flying everywhere. Thanks, guys. Yes, oh, I have a feeling this is going to be all theories. Same. That, that's, that's why I'm really enjoying this book because, like, there's... there's lots of cheap real estate in the GTA to build lairs in, right? Yeah, super cheap. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan O'Neill, I'm not a big sex dungeon guy. I like a bed. Yeah, but you can have a bed in a dungeon. You just have, like, a, you know, all the tools and devices adjacent. I, I really don't need that many tools. You don't need them. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like, like people make their sex like, way too complicated. Eh, it depends. Some people are like, I like a specific thing. And you know what? Specificity is okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we appreciate it. Uh, so, the... Um... Yes, we're in uh, chapter uh, three. We're in chapter three. Fuck. So, yeah, we... (laughs) We're an hour and ten minutes in and we're in chapter three. It's book club. It's book club. (laughs) What did we think was going to happen? Who is surprised? Who is surprised? Uh, Yeah, so Vin uh, Vin is... Her her hackles have been raised. She's like, I gotta get out, I gotta get out, I gotta get out. She goes to the one person she kind of cares about and is like, Ulef, we gotta go, we gotta get out of here. He's not as bad as the other ones. Yeah. So, uh, let's and go. And she's like, I need somebody. So she, he's like, okay, sure. Let's go outside for the rest of the day. Uh, she goes, she picks up her, like, three belongings, an earring that maybe was her mom's. Maybe. Uh, a, what were the other things? It's like an earring. I. I oh, a stone that Oh, her, she has pebbles from every place she's been at. Yes. Yes. Which are not metal? No, they're but just maybe rocks. metal? Just um, rocks. Okay, but. That, that gets complicated really fast. Because uh, I'm like, oh, do steel and iron only pick up alimantic metals? They must. What do you mean steel and iron? When they push when they push steel or pull iron. Yeah. That they The blue lines must only trace to alimantic metals. Or else the, the there would just be lines going into the ground everywhere on Earth. You would just They'd have a giant so line funny. coming up out of the ground. But that would be a really easy all, way to times. find mineral deposits. Of but But it can't be... All metal, because well, there's only ten. Alimentic metals, right? And so, okay, so the okay, blue yeah. must so only all, point yeah. towards alimentic metals, or else the world would be a nightmare scape <laughs> when you turned on that blue, because it would just be a giant beam into the ground. Unless this planet is structurally different than ours. Okay, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ma- maybe, maybe I, I don't know, I don't know, no idea. We'll find out. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I, yeah, because I... Do rocks have metal in them? Where, where do you think we get it from? What? Where, yeah. Rocks are like sediment, like, like sandstone and... Oh, sure, yeah. They're, they're, but they're, there's, there's metal everywhere. Like, there's metal in 
there's metal in your blood, right? Like, like the, the, the amount of metal must be significant, obviously. They're not going to pick up on the metal in people's blood very easily. Right, right, right. Um, but, yeah, there, there, there's, there's metal all over the world. Cool. Like, can I mean, you imagine walking into a kitchen with that on and being like, oh, my God, <laughs> there's a billion forks? Well, I think in a world that has allomancy, you are probably more careful with what you make mundane things out of because the the value of it would be significantly different than it is in our world right because it it has these effects and so maybe they use like stone cookware and stuff i don't know oh maybe yeah yeah i just i it, it was one of those things where i was like using this in a house would be so overwhelming you know in a house like ours absolutely yeah and maybe just they just don't, don't have like metal like in everything the way that we do yeah, because I'm saying it, it's probably worth more because there's there's there is a different market around metal because of the 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 possibilities with it. Like it gives you fucking magic powers in a sense, you know. Like, sure, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll find out. It, it was just interesting. I was like, oh my god, like I can't, I can't imagine being in a kitchen. Um, <laughs> so uh, she's like, we gotta go. She picks up her stuff, goes back to the room, and Ulef has told Cayman. Yeah, because Ulef. Uh, fuck you, dude. He's a coward. And, uh, so, Cayman starts to beat up on Vin, because he's a bad person. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he's, he's not, he's a, he's not a good person. And, uh, yeah. just when we think that it's all over for our main character in chapter three. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine if Brandon Sanderson was like, and she's dead. Chapter three. I really don't think... I cannot imagine that. No, no, I know. I, if, if Brandon Sanderson had a 16-year-old girl beat to death in chapter three of his book, I, think I would, would be legitimately shocked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be pretty rough. From, from her point of view. If it was like another if it was another girl to like make a point, I could see it. But to be like in the point of view of a girl getting beat to death. Who you think is your main character. Who you character, think is your main character. And they're like, nah. <laughs> and no, then Kelsey comes you. and is like, oh my God, I found this girl's body. I, I, yes, I would. That would be fucked up. Legitimately be wildly that shocked. That is not what happens. Uh, Kelsey <laughs> comes in and... Uh, uh, slams came in against the wall mm -hmm. um, and basically probably saves Finland's life. Uh, although, I don't know if Cayman would have killed her because he definitely knows that she's a, a, a misting and so that's complicated but like it was going to be so, a not good time. He's so mad that all of her, her remaining luck, obviously she used most of it on the obligator earlier in the day which is why she doesn't have enough to stop him fully but yeah. she uses a lot of her luck on him and then he keeps going and she even she is like yeah. oh he's different right yeah, now. Yeah, this is so not good. I, I don't know. I think that her life was legitimately in danger and Kelsier does save her yeah yeah I, I pro probably um and then kelsier beats the shit out of him and i and was he's like cheering. hey you you're the leader crew leader now get the fuck out we're using your lair he, he definitely regrets that well it doesn't Maliv, matter they're all Maliv dead definitely regrets when kelsier pointed at him and gave him that job nah. uh Maybe. He gets tortured to death because of it, so sure, I, he, he probably, definitely regrets it. He probably it. <laughs> regrets it at the very end, but not in that moment. Should have taken care of the 16-year-old girl. Uh, Brian, Brian Etier, thank you thank for that, that super, chat. super chat. For some reason, I've always pictured the Steel Inquisitors as looking like the bad guy from Roger Rabbit. Oh. The one that Christopher Lloyd plays, which low-key triggers some childhood PTSD because of how terrifying it yeah, is. Yeah, no, I hate All that. Right. I, I hate that. I'm so sorry. All right. Uh, goddamn. Wow, mods are fucking deleting shit today. Thank you. Y'all are being naughty. You're very naughty, okay? okay? Naughty, naughty. Do not, do not spoil. We, we're, we've we only read section one and two. There are things that you guys know that we don't yet. And that is yeah. okay. That is okay. Um, we're going to get there. So then we, uh, yeah, so Kelsier is like, hey guys, um, I actually need your lair today. So if I could have the room. And everyone's like, uh yeah sure you, uh, yeah okay he also says make sure that cayman's life is hell <laughs> and boy do they follow through on that yep. um so they leave and we get the sit down the first test oh yes they're like you vin you stay um uh, here drink this it's not poison i swear and she's like you drink it first and he's like mm, okay right. <laughs> um and it has um Two metals. No, it has, yes, it has, fuck, which ones is it? It has the, uh, it has... I don't remember which metals are for the emotions. Okay, so tin, tin is eyes. Tin is it senses, yeah. Pewter is strength. Yeah. Steel and iron are push-pull. Yeah. Um, copper. I think it's copper and... And I actually don't know. Well, we'll find out. I don't know. Um, I actually don't know if it mentions it, but yeah, I think it's it's copper and something else. Uh, yes. 
Well, 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 well. Brass. We'll figure it out. Brass is one Copper of them. and brass? Yeah, maybe. Zinc and brass? Copper is to hide. Right, 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 right yes, right, right. okay. Yeah, we did know that. Zinc and brass are the emotions. Zinc and brass, okay. Um, so, she, so she, like, pushes on Kelsier and then pulls on Kelsier. And he's that like, ah, Mr. Uh, and they're like, okay, cool. Oh, wow. This is fucking the best day ever. Yeah. Holy shit, we hit the fucking lottery. <laughs> we hit the jackpot. She's 16 years old, has no family, uh, has no one who cares about her at all, mm-hmm. desperately is looking for someone to give a shit, uh, needs food, has no money, can't run away yet. Uh, we can manipulate this child into being a freedom fighter so easily, and she has all the superpowers. This is like Kelsier's, like... It's his dream. Yeah, it's his the, dream. It true. is the dream. Yeah. Um, I, I think he sees her as a bit more of a person than that, but only a little bit more. Um, I have some thoughts on Kelsier. We'll talk about them in the end, I promise. Um, what? Yeah, nothing. Um, yeah, so, fascinating. You can either use one of the medals or you can use all of them. There is no in-between. Mm-hmm. You are either a misting or a Mistborn. And if you're a misting, you can only use one. If you're a Mistborn, you can use all. You got a sick cloak. Yeah. I want a, I want a Mistborn cloak. Oh, actually, I, I, we'll, we'll get to it when we get to it. Um, okay. Uh, PhD, poor, hungry, and desperate. Yes, man. Pretty much, yeah. But meow, but meow. It, it 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 is the like, it it is dark, but it also leads to us getting to really know just how good Kelsier actually is, because he acknowledges those things about her, and is that you know you get some dialogue in his head where he's like, I really hope that I can save the world, but I also really hope that I can save her. I really hope that I can change the way that she sees the world. Um, and, and give yeah. her the freedom of mind to be happy. Yeah. And I, I, I do love, it makes him, because he makes some bad choices in these early sections, um, it makes him more e- easier to follow mm-hmm. because we know his intentions truly are good rather than making it kind of like, oh, God, this guy's an idiot. Right. Yeah. Whereas, like, yeah, he makes some he makes some rough choices because of his own trauma, but because his, because we know where his intentions are with Vin, um, and because there is no sexual element between Vin and the new crew, that that goes a long way in terms of bringing us in on them. Because Vin is like literally using luck to not get raped for the first crew, and then is yep. there's there's not even a hint, there's not a flirt from it any of them towards yeah. her. There's not a comment because she's 16 and they're adults. Yep. It makes them so immediately better yeah. that it allows your audience to be like, oh, I'm on board with these guys. They're not rapists. Yay, we love like, that. Like the bar, the bar is so fucking low. Yeah, but, this is a uh, they clear world. It. They clear it. Yeah. yeah. Um, next chapter, we get to meet our lovely crew, which we've already kind of discussed. Yeah. Um, you've got um, Ham. Uh, Ham is the, he burns pewter. He's big, strong, and also very philosophical. And He likes to pull uh, mosquitoes out of amber and create dinosaurs. What? Hammond. Hammond is uh, the, the, the old guy who creates Jurassic Park. Don't oh, worry sure. About it. Okay, great. Love that for him. Yeah. Uh, and Breeze. Breeze is the um, emotional um, manipulator. Uh, and the two of... I can't... God, Ham Ours and Breeze. says the bar is underground. That's very funny. The, John Hammond. Yeah, he created Jurassic Park. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, Breeze. Fascinating character. Y- yeah, because his morals are kind of whatever just suits him best. Um, I No, I feel like we get a pretty... I, we get a pretty clear explanation of how Breeze views the world. I don't necessarily agree with it, yeah. but I understand that it is the explanation that he needs to believe to be okay with how he lives his life. Yeah. And be okay with the things that people keep asking of him. Yeah. People want to be so judgmental of him, but people constantly turn to him when they need something. They need him. And so yeah. Breeze, Breeze is that character that... Breeze should be played by the guy who plays Avalda in Wheel of Time. He would fucking crush that. That role. would be that's that's great. He casting. would crush that role. Yeah. Um. Because I would love to see him play a good guy. Because I think that actor is phenomenal. Yeah. Uh. And, and yeah. Uh. But yeah, no. Bree, Bree, Breeze's worldview is what it has to be to get through being judged by everyone around him as they ask for his help. Yep. Right. Yep. I I I, I really sympathized with Breeze a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I feel, yeah. Matt Berry from What We Do in the Shadows. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. 
Uh, we get clubs. Can you imagine all the different ways he would come up with to say soother? No, I'm good. I'm a soother. Uh, I'm, I'm good. Uh, we get clubs, who is the smoker. I'm sorry. I'm just imagining Matt Berry. Please, no. What Being have like, you done? You really are the most ingenious man in Luthadale. I, wow, I, I yeah. Luthadale. I, yep, I hate it. Um, Vin, have you been to Fellier Cellar? Lou, Fadel. What have you done? Austin, this is all your fault. Send in the red wizard. <laughs> oh my god, it'd be so funny. You broke nerdy. Uh, we have a book club. We are almost 90 minutes the in. The most devious man in Lou, Fadel. <laughs> it would be awesome. I so don't know what's funnier, the idea of it or how funny you think the idea of it is. He's just a very funny man. Sure. Lou Thadel, I love that guy. This is not, yeah. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. Uh, anyway. Mission, accompli- mission is not accomplished, James Ross. I have not been locked out of the house yet. True. There's no package oh to go pick up. Um, uh, yeah, like, Clubs is the smoker, right? Yeah. Uh, Clubs is a smoker who, like, hides when people are using Alamancy. Yeah. Very fun. Uh, y- Yeden? Yep. Y- Yeden, I think is how He's you... the money. He, well... He's the leader of the he's... Ska Rebellion. Yes, yes. He's a bit milk toast, but... I, I feel bad for him, you know? He's, he's got, he's really got the, the worst lot in life and trying to, trying to do what he can. And it's like, I don't... Like your methods, but you get shit done, so here we yeah. are. I, I, I do find it interesting to be like a rebellion leader who's like, wait, I want a rebel, but I don't I don't want to like kill people. I don't want thieves. I want no no no. I want to end the empire, but I but like I draw the line at murder. No, he doesn't draw the line at murder because clubs leaves and he's like, Are you gonna take care of him? And Kelsier's like, No, that's not how we fucking do things. Yeah, I I his 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 moral stance was a little strange to me. I feel like we... I, it's survival. His moral stance is survival. Yeah. yeah. That is what it is. You know, he's not going to, like, cause ill on, on people who, like, are just, like, going about their lives. But if they endanger him or this rebellion, it's it's a different story. Yeah. Oh, no, it's Marsh that's the one that's, like... You killed people last night. And he's like, yeah, we're trying Marsh, to... Marsh, yes. Marsh <laughs> is uh, uh, Kelsier's brother. Who's a seeker. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I think. Oh, my God. There are... Guys, we have learned so many words and new meanings for them in this uh, section. And so, so, my question for you, Clarus... We're getting through. Is if you were just a misting... Uh-huh. We all know you would be a misborn, but um, if you were just a misting, which misting would you be? Well, we don't know what they all are yet. Yeah, so. we do. We don't know what nine is. No, I, I don't think there's a misting at nine or ten. I, I think that there is. I think is. there's only I think the eight mistings. Those metals are just so rare, unless you were somehow exposed to them, you would never know. Okay, maybe. Like, uh, that's my theory. I'm too poor to be a uh, adium misting. Okay, yeah, so of right? the eight. Shido, thank you for the super chat. The Cosmere, yay, Warbreaker is my fave. You'll love it. I Hell can't wait. Yeah. Uh, okay, so of the eight, which would you be? Um. Which would you want to be? Not which would I you be? want to be. Be yeah. I, ah, that's tough. Yeah, obviously there's a difference. Like, cause b- being able to hide that you're misting in our world is useless. Yeah, right? exactly, exactly. I, I wouldn't honestly, want to be a smoker. The most fun would be like either iron or steel. No, because if you only have one, you're basically useless. Yeah, exactly. You, only Mistborns can really enjoy the full effects of iron and steel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because you wouldn't be able to fly the way that they do. Well, you you fly, you could jump. No, you couldn't because you couldn't land. You could jump straight up in the air. You could just push down and then push very lightly to, to land properly. You could be really good at jumping. You would kill at track and field. That's all I'm saying. High jump, you're 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 winning. Uh Fudgy Vamp wants to be a pewter misting to just be jacked. Yeah, but you don't get I don't know that you would like no. get strong you would get, get mu- muscles. muscular, yeah. but you you are the muscle because you're stronger. I, I think like pewter is probably the most like all around useful. Being a soother would be practical, but I feel like I would have would, a guilty conscience about it. I would feel it. bad. I, I honestly don't we think have I the could same do it. I, no, I, I would feel guilty. I, I don't think I could. Um, hmm. Yeah. 
I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's tough. I may, maybe I would take being able to, th- like, shoot things. Or pull. No, no, no. Push. I don't know. I would be a pull. Oh. Can you imagine? You're so lazy. You're, like, in the lazy boy. You're yeah, because like... I could just pull the remote over. Oh I could, like, pull my laptop to me. I think I would be the pull. I think that in, in real life, uh-huh. in the real world, I think the one that would be most useful would be to be able to, like, pull metal to me. Not, like, super strength? No, because I why why would I need super strength? I don't know. Go be a fucking firefighter. I I, I mm, yeah. What? Yeah. I mean, the hours suck. Yeah, and you, I just like. But you get to make a sexy yeah. calendar. You get to help people. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, it's bad that like my brain went. But if I'm a firefighter, how would I have time to make YouTube videos? Wow, wow. Uh, you would make YouTube videos of you doing wonderful strength feats, like lifting cars. <gasps> oh my god, that would be fun! Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. I'll be a pewter. I'll be a pewter. Yeah, yeah. I pewter so I can open a jar of pickles. <laughs> you you just be going around cracking those jars for everybody. Exalted Clown says pewter is an alloy. How does it fit? So some of the alimantic metals are alloys. Um, and some of them are pure metals. Yeah, yeah that's, I don't, yeah. P- pewter is, uh, the, the, pu- the, in order to use pewter, it has to be 91% tin and 9% iron. And iron, that's what I makes think. pewter in this world. Yeah, fascinating. I love that if it's like raw off, off, it will like either kill you or make you sick. Um, I don't, I wouldn't want to use tin because like I already, like, I, um, I already don't, like certain feelings mm-hmm. and if those were heightened in any way since so far i would fucking lose my mind like yeah, yeah being able to see in here like a little bit better is like kind of interesting but the downside of a it little bit would piss being me able to see in here a lot better is way less useful than people think mm-hmm. it, it's why and you can like only use that at night right because the sun would be blinding yeah yeah that would be a tough one to use useful if you're a mistborn yeah. but otherwise it's kind of rough Tin and lead. I have to pee. All right. It's uh, the normal time of the show where Clarus uses the bathroom. Um, hmm. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I, I feel like Peter would be fun. I I feel like I would, if I had to choose, someone asked between Soother and Rioter. Daniel Clauser says Soother or Rioter. I think that I would go Soother because I don't really like when people are a lot. I want everyone to calm the fuck down. I don't want people to, like, be doing a lot. Uh, Curtis McDonald says, so I take it you like this book a lot. I'm really enjoying it so far. I, I really, really like it. I think um, it reminds me of the writing in Gathering Storm that I really liked around Andral. The, the, stuff, in, the stuff in Brandon Sanderson's section of the Wheel of Time that I really enjoyed, it feels like this book is just that stuff. And so it, it, it really does kind of feel like the Andrel Black Tower stuff in Wheel of Time. And that makes me really happy because I really enjoyed the way that that was written. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think that I would go with that. Um, uh, being a, th- see, Arzu, a soother therapist, the idea is great. But I think the problem is that you want your therapist to help you manage your emotions naturally <clears throat> and not soothe them while you're in therapy, but then you go out in the world and you go back to being full emotions. And so you don't know how, like, you want to be at full emotion in your therapy session so that you understand how to handle and, and manage yourself better. But if, you're, if your therapist is just making you feel better by soothing you while you're in your therapy session, you go out in the world and you're back at full emotions and you just have, like, the issue of... Well, now you don't know how to deal with it because your therapist is just putting a band-aid on the problem instead of fixing the larger issue. That's fair. Uh, John Schmidt says, this is the book Harriet read to get Brandon Sanderson the job of finishing Wheel of Time. That I get it. makes sense. Honestly, I, I, I get yeah. that. Yeah, he's a very talented writer. That was my guess. Uh, so we so anyways. get to chapter five. We only have 11 chapters to go, guys. It's fine. Um, and we haven't talked about any of the like, um, what, what are the things called at the beginning of the chapters? Oh, I don't know. The Bible. They're not called epigraphs, right? They're called something else. I don't know. Um, Super Chat. Thank you, Matthew S. Daniel Green has his power tattooed on his arm. That's fun. Okay. Oh, do the powers have symbols? Are that are those what these symbols are? I think so. <gasps> the, I, oh, it I is an epigraph. Fuck, guys. I'm so smart. You know words. Um, we'll talk about the epigraphs at the end. 
Um, yes. Because yes. we figured out what the epigraphs are. Well, we, we think really we smart. know what it is. You know what? We figured it out. Both of us figured it out on our own. Uh, and we have the exact same thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I might get one of those simple tattoos. They're very cool. They are sick. Although, every time we start a book series, I'm like, I'm going to get a tattoo. And then... Yeah, let's wait until the end. Make wait sure until we finish reading really it. love it. Um, yeah, so... There's there's a bunch of people. They all get together, and um, um, we. I think this is where we find out that Kelsier's wife is dead. Yeah, mare. Yeah, which is spelt like a female horse, which I thought was an interesting choice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, we we find out about Gemmel, who is Kelsier's uh, the the misborn that taught Kelsier everything he knows. Right. He was like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was crazy? Apparently. Oh. But, I mean, Kelsier is like, yeah, that crazy old man. Yeah, but I think he means that more, um... I don't Colloquially know. and, like, fondly. Maybe. Maybe. The way that I would call, like, my hockey coach a crazy old man. Sure. When he was just a pretty decent hockey coach. You sure. know what I mean? He was just, like, a crazy old guy. Making me do wall sits for five straight minutes. Oh, Jesus. Um... We learn that, uh... The, the, like, head of House Venture's name is Straff Venture. Yeah. Which feels like uh, the most YA name ever. Straff. <clears throat> Straff Venture. Yeah, it's, uh... Him and Caesar Flickerman are gonna go watch the fucking Hunger Games. Um, <clears throat> this book feels like a YA book that it constantly turns the tropes of YA on its head. It's very fun. Yeah, I'm yeah. into it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so they have this meeting, uh... We find out about Haze Killers yeah. for the first time. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, Rafe, uh, or, no, uh, Rafe. Huh? Clubs returns yeah. and is like, I'm on the team. I just wanted to make sure that it was my choice and not, you know, my emotions being soothed or whatever. Um, so I'm sure him and Breeze are great friends. Um, so they got him on the team. They're good. And then Kelsey is like, I need more ATM. And Doxon's like, fuck, really? Again? He's well, going to the ATM. He's going to the ATM. Um, and, uh, Kelsey's like, who should, who should I hit? Who's like the, the, who are the big who's bad on boys? top? Yeah. Uh, it's Venture. So, uh, Kelsey was like, great. I'll be right back. And then we get the fucking dopest introduction to a power system. This was the most Spider-Man for, here's the thing. I can never experience Spider-Man web swinging for the first time in my life ever again, right? I read it when I was so young mm -hmm. that the idea of how Spider-Man gets around New York City is just in my brain. And, like, look, I still love the way Spider-Man swings. I remember seeing Spider-Man the musical on Broadway for the first time and crying the first time Spider-Man swung above the audience. Was my girlfriend at the time super pleased that she was sitting next to her boyfriend crying at Spider-Man? Uh, probably not. She left Wrong the next day for another theater and cheated on me all summer. So, like, I, I don't know. It might have been because I cried at Spider-Man. I'm still working through that with my therapist. But this was... <laughs> it's me. I'm the therapist. <laughs> This, to me, felt like experiencing Spider-Man swinging through the city for the first time as an adult. Yeah. Like, getting to, like, not know that growing up and just experiencing it. Because the way that he's ba boo do 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 through the metal is, like, this is it's so beautiful. fucking cool. It's, it, it is, it, it's beautiful. It's so, it's such yeah. a fun idea. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, like, I was honestly, like, blown away. I was yeah. like, this is so fucking creative. And how you, like, you know, with the coins and everything. Like, it's just, it's all, mm, ah, chef's kiss. So, so freaking good. Michael Kiyoski's kiss. Would you like to swing with Spider-Man, Nerdy? What the fuck do you think? Yes. <laughs> no? Yeah. I don't, it, I, yes. Of course I would want to swing with Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, Scafandi says, is this the first live stream of this series? It is not the first live stream of the book club. Uh, we did the full Wheel of Time and we did Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Paolini. Yes. But is our beginning with Cosmere, Scafandi. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This is book club iteration number three, <clears throat> actually. Uh, Mr. Kite says, it's crazy how intuitive the push-pull movement system is. It's straight out of a dream. I a thousand percent agree with that. Yeah. Um, he, he created something so unique that I just fucking love. Yeah. I love it so much. I was this was the moment where I fell in love with the series. Yeah, I like just this the, him getting to House Venture. Not and what happens there? The action sequence there is so cool. I love the For fight, sure. but just him swing. I was like, oh, I I'm in. This yeah. this was the moment where I was like, I'm fucking in. Yeah, yeah, and the how creative he is with like using uh, the metal that's in the room to mm -hmm. fight the haze killers who like are trained to fight mistings and and don't have metal on them and, yeah. and how he. Like, how, yeah, how he navigates that, like, yeah. 
Oh, man. It was so well done. Yeah. It, it, it was one of the coolest action sequences I've probably ever read. Uh, sleep Sheep, thank you for that super chat. super chat. Good morning. I'm super excited for the Cosmere Book Club. I'm going back to sleep. This is a little too early for me. You know what? That's enjoy scary. enjoy it later. Enjoy it later. Have yeah, fun. yeah. This will live on YouTube forever, so you can always come back to it. Yeah. And it might live on our podcast feed forever, but there are episodes of Wheel of Time missing, and I can't figure out how to get them back on. I'm sorry. Uh, Spotify doesn't like us. Uh, so he goes to House Venture, and he beats the shit out of Earl Buddy. He takes some blows. He's a little bruised, but he's not broken. Uh, and he, he beats up all of the guards. He he just straight up murders people. Like, he, like, oh, yeah. drops dead. people off of buildings. He jokes about it later. He's like, yeah, I fucking dropped them off of buildings. He has no problem with murder. No, none, none whatsoever. He is like a Cal Kestis fighting stormtroopers. Um, yeah, fair. Uh, Facts. Yeah, you're, not, you're not wrong. And, uh, yeah. We, uh, he, he steals the, uh, he steals the safe and the way that he opens the safe. I thought he was going to like, I thought we were going to get a sequence of him like using the push pull to uh, move the combination lock. Uh, but no, he just drops it off the oh, building yeah, and it breaks like, open. No, Hulk smash. <laughs> Um, definitely is, is more of a, a punchy punchy than a, um, like try and solve the problem. I, I, it's a good thing that they can use the like clips to fly and not have to use boxings every time. Otherwise being a Mistborn would be very expensive. I know. Well, and I was thinking, I was like, these beggars around the street just find coins randomly, like littered around and like, ah, yeah. mm -hmm, Well, that and they're. If you are out at night, and nobody's out at night, so it's it's generally okay because of the mists. Right. But if you're out at night, the chances of someone just dropping a coin on you so on they don't head? fall on you, Rude. very high. Yeah, yeah. You'd be like, oh, what's the, oh, fucking mist again? Yeah, 100%. Uh, so it's raining coins. Uh, we we get to see the, the power of um, uh, Kelsier. We also see that he likes to not wear shoes out in the world, which I think is very interesting. Well, uh, shoes have metal on them, generally. And so I thought that Why? the shoes was t- so that there was no metal on his body. You can very easily make shoes without metal. Most shoes throughout history didn't have metal in them. They were oh, okay. they were literally just like a metal, or they were just a l- little leather. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he just finds his balance is better if, if it's like... If yeah, I don't know. Uh, like skin to the ground, but I, I don't know. I, I thought for some reason it was like I don't want any metal on my body. <laughs> to then it says, are you implying that Kelsier is not subtle? How dare you? Yeah. Yeah. How dare we? How dare we? Read and find out. Okay, apparently we're. It's we're a raffo. Thank you, uh, guys. Enter the raffo. You might win something. Um, there's, there's no raffle. There's no. No, I don't the wanna... raffo. I... <laughs> You'll win knowledge. Uh, he uh, gets back to Club's shop. Vin, uh, is there, and she has been forced to, sh- to take a bath, and she hates it because she doesn't smell bad. She's like, wait, I smell like a lady. What? <laughs> I don't want to be a woman. I want to be a boy. I would not want to be a woman in this world either. I don't to want be to be fair. a woman in this world. Eh, yeah, it kind of sucks. Not gonna lie. Uh, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. Sorry. Right. Lodge Monkey says, "I like that every time someone tells him he is insane, he's just like, yeah." He's like, "Yeah, you caught on. Congratulations." Uh, and so Vin, Vin does, Vin does clean up a little bit. Uh, we do, we we don't get the typical, um, we don't get the typical like, I, I because she's been beaten so much, we don't get that typical. Oh, you have so many scars scene. Which I kind of appreciated. Uh, I feel like yeah. most the writers lean into the trope of someone seeing the scars and then b- that being like our one of the ways we make these characters care about each other. Yeah. And Kelsier, Kelsier recognizes her abuse without having to see the like obvious signs of it. He sees the more subtle signs of her abuse, which I think is a stronger choice. Yep, yeah, for um, sure. Because it makes him seem more attentive and more observant. As opposed to being like, oh, you have scars on your back. Your life sucks. Yeah. Which just always feels like, yeah, did you really need to see that to know? You couldn't see the other signs. And so I, I actually think it's a smart choice to have Kelsier not need to see the, those elements of it to know that he needs to step in and help. Yeah, for right. sure. Um, yeah, so um, we find out the big old plan. Big plan. Big awesome plan. plan. We are going to take down the final empire. Let's go. We're going to just fucking nuke it all. Yep. Start over. Start from scratch. Free everybody. Uh, they're gonna, yeah, they're they're gonna fuck around and find and out. And probably find out. Um, and everyone's like, "Wow, uh, Kelsier, you're crazy." And he's like, "Yep, correct. You caught on very quickly." 
Um, so they're basically, they're like writing stuff. They're like, all right. They do a full board. Full, full, full drawing board. It's great. Um, (laughs) there's bubbles. I know. Kelsier's brother shows up and is like, oh, you murdered a bunch of people. Do you want to know their names? And Kelsier is like, no. Uh. But he's also kind of like, sure. It doesn't change that they should have died. They were off. They, (laughs) I'm kind of with Kelsier. (laughs) I think that's why this series is going to work for me. I'm like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Turvok, welcome to the nerd table. Welcome Thank you, Turvok. Um, uh, yeah, it's gonna be. It's go, we're we're gonna have a fun conversation about Kelsey at the end. Um, sure. So yeah. yeah, they're like, uh, we we've got this guy, this lord. Mm-hmm. Don't ask too many questions. He's on our side. Don't worry about it. Don't yeah. fucking worry about it. It's like this is ominous. I have a feeling we're gonna be. Uh, we're, I have a feeling we're going to have feelings about... Marsh. Renault. About what the fuck is going on there. Yeah, probably. I have feelings yeah. very dark. Um, I, I, I like the way this is set up because it felt like uh, Fantasy Ocean's Eleven. Yeah. I much. also like that Vin is a, contributes uh, from her perspective in a way that I thought was really natural. I, I thought that, like... The having her be the character who brings the perspective of being the smaller person in the fight in a situation where they are the smaller person in the fight, yeah. And the because the other members of this crew are coming from the fact that they've been a very successful thieving crew for so long, yep, that they have like the things that work for them, but they've never come up against something this big before, mm-hmm. and so they've never been this big an underdog, yeah. And so, by taking the perspective of Vin in as the biggest underdog in the room, I think it's actually a really smart way to have her be a part of the team really early on, yeah. Um. And I love and, her perspective of thinking Kelsier is totally fucking lying this entire time and being like, oh no, he's actually serious. You know, she's like, yeah, he's Kel- insane. Kelsier's willing to run a lot of different meetings for this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and it, it's a great conversation. I like I like the chalkboard. I like the plan that they come up with. Mm-hmm. I, I like that Kelsier has agreed to do this and really doesn't have a Like, he doesn't seem to have much of a plan at all. They have the ideas. beginnings of a plan. They have ideas. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and then we get to, um, oh, oh, uh, chapter, this was chapter seven, right? Which Oh, Or sorry, no, this goes into chapter seven. Marsh shows up at the end of chapter six. Uh, so we, uh, we get to the chapter seven epigraph is, um, where we... Oh, about the terrorist men? We get the first mention of terrorist men in the epigraphs. We're going to yeah. come back to the epigraphs later. Uh, but, uh, v- v- I, we have thoughts about them. <laughs> uh, um, yep. Yeah. Uh, Marsh and Kelsey are argue and Vin eavesdrops, as you would expect. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, we get, uh, the, the, the Kelsier... Training. Well, we, we get the answer to how Kelsier knew people were behind the wall and stuff, in that, like, the, most people don't know not to wear metal on them, right? Yeah. Which is why I think that people, forks are probably metal. Because I don't mm. think that, like, the forks ability to weapon, recognize though. metal is pervasive enough. Mm. I think that that's kind of a secret. And like the nobles only, would know that, but I don't think that I don't think it's generally known. There's really only a handful of people. Like, yeah, like we're told that these people are like one in ten thousand. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. Well, that'll be a future thing that we'll probably find out. But I am curious to to talk about it. Um, we get a training scene. We get a cool cloak. Well, but I want to start we with I want to let's start with the cloak because this is where the, the trope of the. The cloak. YA stuff is turned on its head a little bit because the cloak... I don't even know what YA means anymore, to be honest. Well, it's but, fantasy. Sure, but I, I mean, like, the in, in the YA version of this, she wouldn't get the cloak until after the time jump, and she, like, has to pass a test sure. that she earns the cloak in. Which is what she says. Yeah, well, and, and I think that it is Brandon Sanderson kind of taking, a, not a jab, but pointing at what is typical in the genre which is that she would have to go through the accepted test and then she would have to swear a vow and now she's one of them and i i loved this exchange i highlighted it um is you look surprised kelser noted i assumed that i'd have to earn this earn this somehow and kelser says what's there to earn this is who you are finn yeah. and I, I loved that element of it because it took being a mistborn away from being this like goal to being this inherent reason why he is treating her the way that he is and it it, it made the scene not about what can she do but about kelsier's motivation with vin being that he wants her to feel welcome he wants her to feel like part of the team and he does that by not 
he he's actively trying not to gatekeep her from this as much as possible. Yeah. He puts her in the meetings day one, right? And and there's that element of it where he is recognizing her this desire to run, this desire to be alone, and he is pushing back on it by welcoming her in, by being like, this is your identity, not your this isn't like some group that you have to earn a spot in. Yeah, she circumvents um Vin's sorry. Kelsier circumvents Vin's expectations at every corner of like, oh, he's going to keep information from me because then I can just leave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? He's not, he, he knows that like I'm tethered to him because I need to know how to use his power and blah, 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 blah. And he just, he just fucking tells her everything. Yeah. He's like, you, you want to know? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I, I don't care. As much as want. possible. He has some secrets left. He has some secrets, but I, I don't think that he has secrets around Alamancy. I think he has personal secrets. No, but he does. He 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 does try and he he's trying to introduce her to the medals in a way that he thinks will be most beneficial to her. Sure. Like he's not just like here's everything, right? Because well, he, he hasn't told her the ninth medal yet. He hasn't told her the ninth medal, but he does tell her like what's dangerous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm, okay, you need a specific composition, otherwise you're gonna get yeah. sick, or you might even die. Like that is a problem. Um, but then don't he sleep also is like, so stomach. this is how steel and iron work. Let's go jump off a fifty foot wall. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I love that he's like, wow, Grandma had to push me. This girl is fucking brave. Uh, but he also, get, he like, they jump onto, so so they, they, we have the train sequence through town. She learns about all the abilities. It's very fun. Uh, and then he's like, okay, let's jump up this wall. So they jump up the wall and she's like, well, jumping up is easy. I don't want to jump down. And he's like, all right, well, you can either jump or you can explain to those guards uh, why you're up here and how you want to get down. And then he leaves. He just dips. Yeah. Yeah. This scene in live action is going to be fantastic. Yeah. When he just... Whoop, yeah. And she's just standing there wait. like... Ah, <laughs> it's like, well, ah, I don't have a choice. And then she jumps and uh, she, she misses. She nearly <laughs> dies. Yeah. Nearly <laughs> dies, but it's fine. Kelsey but she has is, a metal belt, so it's fine. Yeah, it's all good. I love that. It's like, th these are the training wheels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the training wheels only uh, work if there's someone there to catch you. People. And, and not even catch you, but low you because yeah. the danger here especially like your first time is that you will freak out i would and stop immediately yeah while you're at full speed and your back just you pull a gwen stacy you know what i mean oh interesting like you would have to be like the danger for until you're comfortable with the speeding up and slowing down is whiplash Right. Yes, but are you like unless you are jumping stories into the air? Yeah, I feel like the momentum for buildings. that. Well, it's like a, a yeah. You, I think you hit terminal velocity in like thirty-five feet or something like that, right? Oh, okay. Right. So, so like the you're 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 gonna deal with velocity very much. James Ross says the fall doesn't kill you. The sudden stop. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Didn't think about it well, that way, but, but that makes well, sense. But even even like even if your spine doesn't break, you can actually get a concussion from sudden stops. Yes, right. Like you can you, if um, or internal bleeding. Yeah. So so you have to. Pewter might help. Yeah, pewter would probably help for sure. I don't know. I don't know if pewter helps your brain be stronger, but it probably does. Um, it just helps you ignore the that you're dying. But you know, if you're early on and you're not good at burning both things at the same time, oh, it's, it can uh, fifteen hundred feet, not thirty five. It takes 1,500 feet to hit terminal velocity? Here's the thing. I think you would die before hitting... Ter no, wait. Terminal means deadly in this context, right? Is that what that means? What? No, it's terminal velocity is the fastest speed that you can fall. So it's not terminal like you're terminated like you're dead. It has nothing to do with that? Terminal velocity... Oh, no. Terminal velocity is 1,500 feet per second. Yeah. Uh, James Ross, yeah, terminal velocity, you can't go any faster than terminal velocity, yes. Okay. But it, I don't think it takes 1,500 feet to hit terminal velocity. Yeah, okay, you die before that. You die before you you reach terminal velocity. Like, there's, okay. That word is going to lose meaning. No, 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 you can hit, no, no, you don't die before you hit terminal velocity. That's not true. You can hit terminal velocity very quickly. You can hit it, but I, I think that, like... You can die if you at died, lesser if you, speeds. Yeah, but if you died, if you died by hitting terminal velocity, you would die skydiving, which you don't. People survive skydiving all the time. Well, yeah, because they have parachutes. Yeah, but you hit, you 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 slow yourself down, so it doesn't matter. 
No, but you 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 slow yourself down from terminal velocity. Sure. Right. Yeah. You splat at less velocity. Oh, 100 percent, you splat at less yeah, velocity. Yeah, But you don't die from hitting terminal velocity. Yeah. Yeah. No. Twelve seconds of falling. Oh wow. Okay. Huh. Cool. 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 Okay. Um. Anyway. Twelve seconds is not that. You don't long. have to be at terminal velocity to get whiplash, right? Cool. And so. We love a good tangent. The. Yeah. The, the, my point is that the whiplash of doing this is dangerous. Yes. On top of the col- the actual, like, hitting something is dangerous. Right, right, right. Yes, yes. The freaking out nature of it, which I, that would be me. Yeah. I'd be dead. Uh, but then they, they, they flee. They they go and um, she does jump and they go, they go get They can get pull in a- an expanse where your bones go through your skin. <laughs> They could, yeah. <laughs> Actually, no, I don't think they could get going fast enough. I don't know, I don't, I don't know. Because um, that guy's going beyond... Yes, because it's not yeah, gravity. The amount of in, G's he's at when no, that no, happens. No, no, I know. I just, that was the visual that came to mind. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yep. You, Joshua Anyways. McCallier says you die from sudden deceleration, not from the velocity. That's yep. not true in the Expanse. Well, you can definitely die from the velocity. That's why they get shoot up. They get the... Yes, the, the, the expands sh- different. The yes. juice shot into their spine. In space, rules different. Yeah. Well, even on Earth, right? Like, um, uh, there, are, there are fighter jet pilots that have died um, while flying planes because they are, their brains they, their brains start to... Jesus Christ. Yeah. If you, like, push too hard, um, you, can, you can pass out. You can literally, like, you can, like, deoxygenate your brain from moving so quickly. Yeah. That's why, uh, that's why, um, like, space pilots, uh, astronauts, that's what they're called. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Space pilots! Uh, you have to, uh, that's why they do, like, the the heavy G training for when they take off. Because the, like, pressure can knock you out. The juice is about the acceleration, not the velocity. Science, math, numbers. Uh, anyways, I went to school for musical theater. Um... So, uh, Ben gets this really cool training session. We learn about uh, but but the G forces are created by the velocity. You I can't have G forces without. I cannot participate in this conversation with you, and I'm trying to move the conversation to something that I can participate in because I'm like, sure, whatever Google says. See, this is why Hammond and I would have a good time. Uh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Although I don't think you can get to space in this world. So Alec M88, that is a very cute emote. I do love it. Um, yeah, yeah, I, it's science. We are moving on, also, Minnie, we're, we're moving on. Uh, so, they... Well, Austin, if, if tangents are not your thing, this may not be the book club for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, how fast can a horse go? Oh, my God. Anyway, It's not about how fast they can go, it's anyways, about how far they can travel yeah, in a day. I know, I know, I know. Uh, we meet me, know. Sazed on, by the road, on the other side, outside the wall, in the mist. Uh, and Sazed is really carry. cool. I like him a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. He's he's one of the most interesting characters so far for me. Yeah. I want to know everything about him. Um, and uh, he's like, all right, you want to go? And they're like, yeah. And so they get in the carriage. And they're like riding to Fel- Feliz Navidad. And and Vin is like, so I can just leave now if I want it. And Kelsey's like, uh, yeah, sure. Here's uh, three grand. Well, no, she's like, well, I can't actually because they don't have any money. And yeah. he's like, oh, good point. Here's, here's 3,000 boxings. Uh, that's all the money I took off of Cayman. So, um, go. Yeah. And she's like, okay, I will. And he's like, all right. Hey, uh, turn the carriage around. Turn around. And Sazed's like, okay, do you think that Sazed actually turned the carriage around? Or did he just keep going in the same direction? No, they felt it move the different, the opposite direction. I have a feeling that they, I, I think this no, whole thing was planned. Around, he turned I think around. this whole thing was planned and he knew that she wouldn't last. He, nah, he turned around. My favorite thing about her reasoning for sticking around, though, uh, is... We'll get, we'll get there, chat. We'll get there, I promise. My favorite thing about it is that she's, he's like, why, why, why do you want to come with us? Do you care about the mission? She's like, uh-huh. I just want to see what happens. And he's like, I believe her. <laughs> I believe that that is reasoning. Yeah, you know what? It, she's, she is honest, at least. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, honestly, at this point, I'm just kind of curious. This seems crazy. I'm curious what's going to happen. Yeah. Rather, like, see this I, from close I up. might end up in a whorehouse, or I could, like, take down the government. So, like, my life's crazy right now. What's new with you? We uh, didn't start the fire. You guys are right. We did see, we skipped the mist wraith. The mist wraith. They're real, but they're not what you, the ska think that they are. Yeah, but they also, like, become what they eat. They are literally what they you eat. You are what you eat, yeah. yeah. You like Don't a, you put it in your mouth. That's Don't you put it in Canadians your mouth. Only. Or you might have a knee. Or you might have a knee. Some were deep in your neck. Some were deep in your neck. Where you don't want to pee. I'm sorry. You might get sick. 
Ick. This not okay. Real uh, quick. <laughs> Embrace is it an African Real horse sick. or a European Real horse? Real quick. Oh God. Don't um, you it's put actually it in your spirit mouth. stallion of the Cimmerian. Cimmer, <laughs> the Cimmerian. The Cimmer, 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 Cimmer. Um, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, the mysteries are fucking weird. They don't seem that, like, they, they, they're they not, like, actually dangerous. Like, they don't hunt people. They no. just, like, scavenge. Corpses. Corpses, which is. But can you imagine I see why seeing you get... one? Oh, terrifying. It's got six heads. Ter- look, 40 absolutely knees. terrifying. Yeah. I would not want to meet one in real life. But the, the idea of them is so horrifying that I can see why these like rumors around them are so awful. Because you're like, that that thing is fucked up. Okay. Of course it has to be evil and man-eating. But know? how long until Kelsier and Finn are riding one into combat? Because it's going to happen. Those things are going to become steeds. Well, here's the problem. Oh, wait, they move like shit. Yeah, they don't move they, like, very crawl. fast. Yeah, yeah. But here's the thing. Show Kelsier, me the very meaning of haste, and it's like, kill Kelsier me. Kelsier kind of implies that some of them might be sentient. They're all sentient. Well, no, some of them are instinctual. Oh, oh, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. But like that, some of them are old enough that they might have the memories of the past world. Do they get the memories of the things they eat? I have a feeling we're going to find out that they are in some way being pun their their previous souls were being punished by the Lord Ruler. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I think the mist is. What do you think the Coloss are? I have no idea. No idea. I think that they're just. I I, I think that they're not going to be as crazy as I think they are. Because at first I was like, oh, they must be like magic creatures. But now I'm starting to thought. think that they're like, oh, they're they're just like. Kind of like the um, the Cal Drogo's people. The um, the um, oh the de, oh, fucking. The, Why can't I remember what they're called? I the the Dothraki. I was about to say Duvrangergata. Um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> what's Duvrangergata from? That's Aragon. Right, right, right. Oh, is the God. wandering. I have so many fantasy things in my head. I, I think they might just be because it was like they destroy things in their wake. So I think it's going to be something like the Dothraki, where they're like a very like, just like physically aggressive people. Oh, like maybe they are maybe they are people who have been soothed or like rioted so hard that their emotional intelligence is like gone almost and so they are Oh, like maybe that, yeah. A hyper violent sect of people. Yeah. People are getting thing. people are getting the message deleted. Stop trying to spoil the chain. I know you're excited. Stop it's it. It's okay. Um yeah, maybe they're maybe Maybe like the 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 Steel Inquisitors and the Coloss are like people who have they, like they experienced Alamancy on, and they're oh, like a, almost like like the Coloss are almost like a, it's they've gone wrong like they they have to be kept far enough away yeah. from civilization. The the Maybe? the like Alamancy has made them feral. Maybe that or my initial thought was literally that they were some like mythical like beast from like Maybe, the yeah. fucking pits of Halsen or something. You know, we'll see. It's the Balrog. It's just a fucking city of Balrogs. Uh, so uh, they get to um, they get to Feliz Navidad, and uh, they meet Renu, who is a fake Renu, but he's been renewed into a new man. Uh, and he, he looks like the real one. The plan here is he that carries himself like the real one. The plan here is that Vin is going to spend uh, the next year mm-hmm. uh, training as a Mistborn and also pretending to be this guy's distant cousin at balls and secret parties so that she can get information out of yes. the nobility while also meeting handsome boys that she can have a little bit of a romantic flirt with. So that <laughs> yes, the goal for the, so the goal of. One, one of the pieces of the plan is to create a house war. They want the nobility to fight among themselves because it's bad for society, it confuses things, it puts people on edge, and it just kind of creates a general chaos. Vin is going to help with that because um, they need someone on the inside to know who's kind of plotting against who, who's talking about who, who's connected to who, all that fun information stuff. So burning yeah. tin, very useful, except those balls, way too well lit for that. So I don't know, she's going to have to figure it out somehow. She's going to invent sunglasses. Vin is going to be the inventor of, oh, of sunglasses. Oh, she'll be the shade witch. Yeah, like it's going to be a new fashion that she instigates. It's going to be like, yes, I wear sunglasses indoors at all times. Thank mm-hmm. you very much. 
Uh, and so we we kind of get to the end of part one. Yeah. Part two, Rebels Beneath a Sky of Ash. Uh, it's months later. <laughs> uh, I did not think that this book would have such a huge time skip, but uh, Vin I'm is... I'm happy for it. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it because Vin is fucking killing it. She is Very really smart. good at being a Mistborn. She's really bad at being a human being. And uh, it's it's a really interesting character choice for her that she, this this element of her character that is so beaten down and makes her want to feel small, feels so comfortable where she can't be seen. And the, the isolation that she was so desperate for in Cayman's thieving lair, um, she finds in the mist. Uh, yeah. And so she's actually, she is more comfortable there and she's better there and she, she knows how to use her powers there. But the place where she's needed is in the bright lights, big city that she doesn't want to be in. And by pushing this character to have to be in the place she doesn't want to be while demonstrating all of the reasons why she's so good in the place where she doesn't have time to be is fucking great. I love it. Yeah, it's awesome. I also love the moment. This is jumping ahead a little bit, but it it just is in relation to this. Her, like, realizing that her facade of a noblewoman is her hiding in plain sight which is something she's never been able, she, she hasn't been able to do before and that it gives her the confidence to do what she has to do because she almost freaks out. Mm-hmm. She, it yeah. almost goes to, fu- to to shit. But she's like, no, these people don't actually see me. They're looking at my hairstyle. They're looking at my gown. They're looking at the well, way let's that get, I eat. Well, let's get to that when we get to it. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. chapters from now. And I want, I know, I want to just, spend time talking about it because it's cool. It's just fascinating. Um, um Yeah, we meet, uh, we, well, we kind of get to know Cezette a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Uh, Terrisman. Um, so that kind of becomes her personal butler. Yes, in and a way that trainer. like their relationship is really cute. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, you're really fucking good at this, but you keep putting off training. Well, and her thing is like, do all butlers give as much lip as you do? And he's like, the good ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was she like, knows. that's such a good fucking line. She knows. She knows. <laughs> She gets it. Um, there's definitely a world where I would love for Cezed to be cast as a woman in a live action thing. Mm. Um, because just because uh, Vin has so few like female like role models, I think a world where Kelsier and Cezed are her role models and she, like do like a male female thing there, I think that you could do that really well. In the depth, obviously that might not be the case depending on how the books go. Sure, but for yeah. my money right now, sure. like that would be a character that I would like. Just because of the relationship they could have. Yeah, yeah, I, I see that. Uh, yeah, you're right. That might change depending, uh, you know, further in that we go. But I do love that idea. And, like, for Vin having some kind of, like, female influence. It's yeah. not just, like, mm-hmm. yes, being a woman is only terrible. You know, that there that, that is, is not only terrible. That there's, you know, there's some parts of who you are that, like, you can embrace. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It wouldn't work, but we'll find out later why. All right, fine. Sure. Um, the, uh, yeah, so I, we, we get introduced to the idea that Cezed keeps, um, introducing religions to Vin. Yeah. I'd be like, maybe try this religion on for size. And I'm like, guys, atheism is great. You could just be, but no, uh. Maybe that is one of the religions. No, that's, that's not how that works. No, I know. Uh. What's the one that's like anti-religion, but it kind of it's all own? Uh, uh, never mind. It, uh, there's a name for anti-theism. Maybe I don't yeah. remember. Uh, so the the thing that I like about this though is that uh, as much as I am, and you know, I'm not a religious person. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of most organized religions. Uh, the element of her being like so the religious people held out the longest against the. Um, no, agnostic is not a religion. That we we don't need to get into that. <laughs> Everybody on Earth is agnostic. The uh, other conversation. That's a whole different conversation. <laughs> agnostic versus atheist is like a whole thing. Um, people just misuse agnostic. Um, the 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 conversation of the, the religious people held out the longest against the the Lord ruler. The Lord ruler. Because they had something to believe in, mm-hmm. and like religious people are the hardest people to take hope from, is a is really well handled and really like a fun way of bringing up the theme of hope, which is really what this book is about. Right? Yeah, is about how to find hope in a dire situation, um, and and bringing it up in this way of being like, yeah, like there were like there were religious people who held on to their beliefs for 500 years. Well, because here's the thing, and it totally makes sense in a society where. 
if if you or I and I were alive in this world mm-hmm. and we were not religious, and some guy sh- showed up was like, "I'm God," and did things that we were like, "Yeah, you kind of seem like God," you know, had what his I mean? body burned down to a skeleton and healed from that. Yeah, I'd yeah. be like, "Oh, sure. okay, you know what? I kind of get it." But if we were in that same position, but we were religious and yeah. we had our own beliefs to hang on to and like combat with that one, I can see why the religious people were the ones who held out the longest because oh, they had yeah. something else. But the people who like don't have a god are like oh well shit like that's kind of proof like I, I don't know like seems godlike to me well and say said when he's a keeper of the truth about the past right that's what the keepers are yeah it seems to be i'm so excited to find out what that is me too especially because he's the 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 epigraphs call the guy the hero of ages and i was like link wait is this one of the timelines from Leg- which wait which of the legend this of zelda timelines mask, is this actually um, i don't think it can be majora's mask I don't know. it has to be a t- it has to be in the timeline where link loses right so there's three there's three legend of zelda timelines coming out of ocarina of time right? Oh. There is the one where the Link wins, the one where Link loses, and the one where Link wins and goes back to being a child and lives his life from there. Ah. Majora's Mask is in the third one. This has to be in the ch- timeline where Link loses. Right. Which becomes the um, Tears of the Kingdom timeline. The, the the Breath of the Wild Tears of the Kingdom timeline, which makes sense because in Breath of the Wild Tears of the Kingdom, when the monsters reset, the sun goes red. Right? Oh. And the sun is red in this world. The sun is so red. This and the is leaves are brown. canonically Hyrule. All the leaves are brown. All the leaves are brown. Yeah, this has <laughs> this is just this is just Hyrule. Mm. But the Never played it, so Link hasn't played. been born yet. If you say so. And so or maybe this takes place in the hundred years between when Link is asleep in Breath of the Wild. Sure. Yeah. Sure, why not? The Lord Ruler the Coloss, is just Ganon. The Coloss are those stone machines. They're the no 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 no. They're the they're the bokoblins. <laughs> Hobgoblins. Uh, Methody, thank you for that super. No bokoblins. Are they? They're I'm, called bokoblins. I thought this started with. An, I don't know. It doesn't matter. I haven't played it, so... Uh, Yay! I haven't played it, but I'm going to correct you on what they're called. No, I played enough of it to, like, see... I thought they were, like, hobo... Hobo hobo cobblin... I don't know. I don't fucking know. I thought... I swear it started with an H. I don't know why... Yay! Finally caught you live for a bit. Looking forward to causing your journey with you guys. And since my wife and I have started watching Realignment, I'll definitely check out your TJRPG stuff, too. Thank you so much! Yeah! yeah. Dragonlance comes next week. Let's go. Moblins are the big ones, yeah. Moblins? No, yeah, I don't I don't know why. They're called Hacoblins. Hacoblins. I don't know why. I swear I, saw, I thought it started with an H. Horacoblins are the lanky, climby ones. Yeah, but those are in the in Tears of the Kingdom, and she hasn't played that. Oh, I've only played the very beginning of Breath of the Wild. She Wild. never got off the plateau, you guys. I never left the plateau. Yeah. So, yeah. But no, this is just, this, is, this whole world is just Legend of Zelda. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, if you say so. Uh, it is. It is. The Lord Ruler is Ganon. He won. It's been a thousand years. And now the the hero, the new Hero of Ages has risen to take out Ganon for uh, another he time. Is, the sky is red. Yeah, it's... He's risen. Um, <laughs> all right. Yeah. We, uh... Yeah. Just not Jim Zelda. So, where, where were we? Um, Although, technically, this came out before Breath of the Wild. So, maybe Breath of the Wild stole the red sun from this book. I don't know. Thieves. Uh, oh, no, he figured it out. Guys, Thieves. big brain. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, yeah, I, we get to chapter 10. I think that was most of... We Oh, we, we kind of learn a little bit about the world through Vin's perspective of, like, learning, you know, who the great houses are and their order of power yeah. and that kind of fun stuff. Definitely going to be important at some point. Yeah, because they're, we're going to have them fight each other. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I so so then we realize uh, so in the conversation between Sazed and uh, Kelsier, Kelsier's like she's not learning fast enough. She's really good at some things, but we need her to learn the other things. And Sazed has a really fucking great point of view here, where he's like, "Why not take her to the people who are specialists in one thing instead of trying to teach her yourself everything? Take her to each person who is a specialist in one thing. Yeah, because they're they, you know, it's the jack of all trades, master of none thing, right? And so they go to a meeting. Uh, basically, the part of the plan to take down the Empire is to raise an army for Yedin to ride in with. We didn't go fully into the plan because I feel like we'll talk about it in stages as it happens. Yes. Um, and you guys know And you guys have read the book. Yeah. Uh, it's a good, pl- it's a fun plan and I'm excited to see where it goes wrong. It is a plan. Because I think it's going to all fail. Yeah. I think like the first attempt will fail, but everyone's going to be so excited that we're going to go for round two. Um, personally. 
the they they go to a meeting and Breeze they're in like a back room behind a wall and Breeze is running the soothers in the room by sending in waiters while Kelsier is giving his speech. Yeah. And fuck, this is a good scene. Yeah. It's, it's a this I my favorite scene obviously is Kelsier's first fly. Sure. My most like the the scene that made me go like, "Oh shit, we're going deep here." Was this. Yeah. This this way of explaining how the soothing powers can be so powerful in a group is so fucking effective. Yeah. Like this scene is so wonderful to read. Yeah. I it's... truly truly just loved it. Yeah. It's a really fascinating concept. It's well executed. Yeah. And like having um having Breeze's character be questioned by others in the series, like uh, this would feel this would fall so flat if there weren't other characters being like, is this morally right? Like, what are the implications of this kind of power in this world? Mm-hmm. I-, I love that that is like introduced in the book already, and so you're already thinking about it while watching it happen. Um, yeah. So. I love the setup for that. I love how it all plays out. Um, and watching Breeze as a like master of his work um, like execute this plan. I think it's yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. It's so cool. Uh, yeah. And so they get about 20 signups, which is a problem because they need to get 10,000 people. And 20 per meeting is not going to cut it. Not going to cut it. Not going to. Uh, they're sending these people to the caves to the north to train. Yeah. Uh, there's a really cool element of it where like they're being Let's trained get by down to business. people who have worked for the Empire in the past. And, like, how they feel about that. And I, I I think that, like, complicating the narrative of who do you trust in these situations is really great. Um, yeah. And, yeah, so they, they go out and uh, we get to chapter 11 where the crew, um, uh, after the meeting, they find out that something happened at Cayman's lair. Now, obviously not Cayman's anymore. It's Malev's. They go check it out and everybody's been fucking murdered. And well, they go so to check violently. it out because they know... Everyone's dead. Yes. And it's bad. Everyone has been ripped apart. They find Malev. He's been tortured. Uh, and we find out that uh, this can only have been done by a Steel Inquisitor. And so the Steel Inquisitor that was previously on the trail of Vin has found his way back to being on her trail. Yeah. There's, it's, it's gross. There's something special about the Inquisitors. Uh, Kelsier says they don't understand how they work. They, like, defy the normal rules but so so does the lord ruler if he heals the way that he does right yeah so oh yeah for sure there's some there's some other kind of allomancy going on here that our main characters are not aware of there's something funky going on something old ancient new and blue we're getting married um i don't know it's <laughs> so old something new something borrowed something blue yeah that's that, that's, that's what i said uh and uh yeah it's fun it's cool <laughs> Uh, the corpses are really fucked up. It's yeah. not, not a good time. And Ulef is there and she's like, I like kind of feel bad, but I also had to like use magic to stop him from raping me. So like maybe I shouldn't feel that bad. Uh, yeah. And um, so yeah. Kelsier is like, okay, you guys go. This is bad, but there's nothing we can do about it now. Get back to the clubhouse. I'm going to go check on something. So he goes to an intersection and he... Uh, he checks on something but vin is following him because vin vin is always him. vin is always there vin does not understand boundaries and uh <laughs> they find no. cayman's body yeah he's been hung hung through the throat yeah which is like a special torture reserved for uh reserved for people who harbor mistings was that it yeah or, or yes. who are misusing mistings so yes. we find out that this means that during the torture he revealed that he knew, knew that visting had powers which we didn't know until this moment you know it's kind of up in the air whether or not came in understands why she's so valuable yeah and clearly he did yeah uh and so yeah we we get um vin is show naive <laughs> jonathan Vendors? that is no. so funny <laughs> yeah she just stalks everybody um God damn uh it. and so yeah, so Cayman, uh, Cayman had been turned into a beggar, which in this world is bad. Only um, uh, people who are... Uh, so fucked up. Yeah, only people who are, like, uh, disabled or a- a- amputees uh, They, like, can literally beggars. can't work, yeah. and so they have no other choice, which is crazy. And so it's, uh, it's definitely rough uh, for him, but he is now dead as well, which tells us that... The stakes are high. The stakes are high, yeah. Someone's com- <laughs> someone is coming for our main characters. 
Uh, and it's 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 dark, but it, it shows just how far the bad guys are willing to go, which I think has made, the stakes of this world are exactly where I want them to be I because I'm so invested in them. It's great. Yeah. And uh, so we get to chapter 12 where Vin gets to go to her first ball. We get a little bit of torture and murder. We get a ball. This book has everything. Every fantasy thing <laughs> you could hope for. Because there's a female main character who doesn't want to wear a dress. So guess what she has to do? Wear, wear a, dress a dress and meet a boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Um, uh, <laughs> it's it's honestly great. There, we talked about it, but we'll bring up that moment where she's like, "Oh fuck, I'm fucked. Can't do this." And then it's like, "Oh no, it's it's one of the best moments." It's so good. It's so good. Mm-hmm. She's like, "Wait a second, these people aren't seeing me. They don't fucking know me." Nah. Yeah. Uh, we got a quote. Yeah. Love it. You know, I really like a moment when I highlight it. Oh yeah. Uh, none of them could see Vin. They could only see the face she had put on. The face she wanted them to see. They saw Lady Valet. It was as if Vin weren't there. As if. Ellipses. She were hiding. Hiding. Right in front of their eyes. Dun, dun, dun. And that's where the sick like. Dun, 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 dun. Like, <laughs> Am I more than you bargained for? Yeah. I'm just dying inside. Yeah. Because uh, I think all movies should take place in 2007. <laughs> that's very specific I really wish this had been a movie when I was in high school this, right? I would have fucking loved it oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah so we get uh, we get Vin at, at the ball mm-hmm. she she realizes that she is hiding which yeah. makes her realize later which I think I didn't highlight but is also a fantastic beat for her that not only is she hiding now as Lady Valet but Vin is also a hide yes Vin is not who she is. She is no. who she is in the mists. Yes. And I think that is such a cool way to make this character feel a little bit deeper. Yeah, yeah, because like Vin, Vin as like the Vin that she has been her whole life is just to, a survivor. Like yeah. she she has nothing else. And I love that the mists, like she feels so comfortable in them and she's able to finally like get some kind of a sense of who she is and can be as a person. Yeah. Because in a world like this, a lot of people are not allowed that luxury. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> um, crazy that it would be considered a luxury, but that's how dark this world is. Uh, unfortunately, they forgot to teach her how to dance, so she has to politely decline the dancing, yes, so which she... <laughs> means that she will have to dance with them at the next party. Uh, yeah. I love that she's like, literally like one minute later. I, I finished and a minute later, there was a boy like... Dance with Madame. me. Madame. She's like, I'm so bad at <laughs> dancing. <laughs> I'm so overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Um, I am whelmed. Uh, yeah. There, there's so much here that's so fun. I, I love mm-hmm. the way she is scanning the crowd and watching the obligators. She sees her dad. She's her dad. Daddy. Uh, who Reen, her brother, uh, had like pointed out to her one time because she should know. Also, Reen is her half-brother. Yeah. So is do they have the same dad or the same mom? Same mom. Do we know that for sure? I'm almost positive. I don't know if we do. Because if Reen shows up and is also a Mistborn later on, it could be interesting. I thought it was implied that they had the same mom. They might. I, I don't know the answer to that question. Um yeah. Um but uh yeah, the, the there's just so much there's so much in this chapter detail wise that makes the world feel very cool. Uh the when she's looking at the stained glass windows of the deepening, which is a great name for a villain. Uh, similar to the Deep, uh, who's a sexual abuser in The Boys. The Boys, uh, yes. But the Deepening is a very cool enemy. Uh, I have a feeling that everything we know about the Deepening is a lie, and I cannot wait to find out more about it. But if it's not a lie, it is very similar to Legend of Zelda, The Breath of the Wild. Uh, <laughs> which came out a de- over a decade later. I'm not saying this stole from Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild came out in 2016. But... Um, right. It is very funny to me how similar this is to Legend of Zelda. <laughs> sure. It's and I haven't played, so I wouldn't know. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. And so... Yeah, and her, like... Well, but, but also, like, okay, but also, the way that their powers work are kind of like the push-pull stuff that you get in Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, like, there's just so much about this that just feels like Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild kind of ripped it the off. The Nintendo execs were really big Mistborn fans. <laughs> they were really big really, Mistborn fans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that for them. You know what? Preach. I'm sure Brandon Sanderson loves it for them as well. Yeah, do you uh, want to just move metal, but only metal around? Yeah. Do you want to move metal and only metal around? Play Legend of Zelda. I love that. Or read Mistborn. Um, <laughs> but this, this story of like the, the Lord Ruler defeating the Deepening somehow and that making him God is so... I cannot wait a to figure out how the Sliver of Eternity, that's a great fucking name for a villain, 
Um, I know. I fucking know. <laughs> it's a bad name for a fantasy MacGuffin because it's too obvious. But sure. having it be a person called the Sliver Infi- of Infinity, of Eternity, mm-hmm. very cool. Wait, is it now? Is it Eternity or Infinity? Now? I think it's the Sliver of Eternity, right? I don't know. And the so the the I, the I cannot wait to find out the truth about that because it's obviously a lie. The fact that the deepening yeah. is formless and... Infinity. Okay, it is infinity. Yep. Of infinity. Dang, I was like, oh, shit. Now I don't know. Uh... The, the deepening being formless in all of these depictions tells me that it is not true. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about it because I think that there is more truth. T- we'll get to it at the end. We'll talk about it at the end. Um, Correct. So, they're, yeah, they're at the ball and uh, Vin uh, gets to eat and reject boys and go up to the balcony and that's it and then she's done then the ball is done uh for her anyways uh but she she like sees this like vantage point up top she's like wow i can see everything from up there so she she goes up i love that she like sazad had to go to like a different dinner the servant's dinner to go be a spy yeah exactly um and i love that she like burns pewter a little bit because of the like heaviness of the dress and like fuck (laughs) that was so funny yeah yeah. i know and i was like girl i feel you when she gets out of the carriage the the uh the line that is um oh i realized that chivalry chivalry isn't stupid women's clothing is stupid yes It's like, yes, Brandon, well done. She uh, gets it. Well fucking done. Yeah, she, she gets it. I love that. Crack me up. Um, so she goes to the balcony, and yeah. she meets a mysterious boy. Timothy Chalamet. Reading. Yes, she meets Timothy Chalamet, who's like, oh, I'm trying to read my book, and now there's a fucking lady in the way. Yeah. And she's like, okay, well, f- fuck you. Like, she's yeah. like, I don't know how to interact with this person. Um, And then she can't get him out of her head, which is very funny. Yeah, because he like, negs her. He does. He's like, oh, I mean, do I need to put my book away? Okay, do you want to dance? And she's kind like, kind of. No, and he's like, yeah, right. Kind of, kind of, yeah. I mean, he doesn't like insult her. Um, really, kind of. I'm never not gonna be able to see Ellen as Timothy Chalamet now. I know he You're he would be perfect. You're welcome. Um, but yeah, they have this like very. It's barely even a conversation, but um. But but he's like, he's intriguing to her because he. She's like oh shit talks his own family yeah well he she doesn't know it's his family communi- at first no no but in in the in the moments after when she realizes that it's Mr Venture, um one of the Venture brothers yeah the Venture <laughs> he is the eldest and the heir, the heir. to the Venture but he name. also Fortune. is um he also is not dismissive of the ska the way that other nobles are. And so he yes. immediately, like, he before she knows shit. who he is, yeah. he is like, oh, he's maybe not a bad guy. And that's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. He has feelings on the servants being beaten yeah. for no reason. Like, he's... And so he breaks her, he breaks the um, idea in her head of what a nobleman is. And so he stands out to her. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It is, it, it is... Pro- probably very like earth shattering yeah <laughs> in a way like a, a noble person who is not who is not happy about like people being beat for for yeah. no reason like who who has an opinion on it that's not indifference yeah or like hatred towards the sky um uh and so yeah. she is pulled away because Sazet comes back uh, and she's like, yeah, I was talking to this guy, Ellen. And he's like, Ellen Venture? You fucked up. And she's like, what? You They're wanted like, me to talk oh, to people. No. Like, we wanted you to talk to people who don't matter. You yeah. can't talk to the people who do. He matters too much. Yeah. And we have to go tell Kelsey about this. This is a terrible situation. Well, and the, the problem is they want her to be there, right? Yeah. They want her to, to be able to get into the circles enough to overhear things and learn things, but not to draw attention to herself. They're like, we don't want to make a scandal. Cause but I guess, now that he's asked you to dance, next time you have to dance. Well, yeah, we'll see about that. I have a feeling they're they're dan- they're dan they're not going to, like, dance. They're just going to do, like... Something else, yeah. like like they're they're gonna I don't know create a new style or whatever the like whatever you yeah. want to call it. They're, no, a hundred percent. They're gonna fuck around with expectations, and Vin, Vin is gonna go along with it. I think like she, yeah, she's there. She has an important reason for being there, but also she's discovering herself, and 
a big part of that, I think, for every human who figures out who they are is rebellion. And that that includes rebellion against, like, you know, like, the, the, the thing that she is working towards and her friends, like, a, a little bit. Enough, enough to matter, I think. Yeah. I'm just going to throw this out there to be helpful for people on Twitch. Yes, Emations is, like, no hello. Uh, if you're in the talk shows and podcast category on Twitch, people probably aren't going to talk to you. They're doing that. They're doing a show. A sh- show. So, like, context clues will help you in the future. Yes. Uh, yes. We, yeah. We're not just here to say hi to people. This is a show. <laughs> I understand we're on Twitch, but the category's right there. Yep. Um, God, I can be an asshole sometimes. I think that that's totally fair for them I to know. be like, what, you didn't say hello to me? No, no hello? hello. We're, we're doing a thing. We're doing a thing. Um, um, so, the... Uh, yeah, the, the 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 fun of that is over pretty quick because they get mad at Vin and they're like, go to bed. And she's like, fine. And so she gets out the window. Uh, they go all the way back to Felice and then she, Kelsier won't tell her where she's he's going that night. So she's like, I'm going to stalk him because if there's one thing I know how to do in these books, it's stalk that man. Yeah. And so they, she does. She follows him. They On find... the yellow brick road. <laughs> she finds the yellow brick road. Oh, the yellow brick road. <laughs> Follow the lava bro crowd. Follow, 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 follow the lava bro crowd. Doing uh, this voice for the, the for the Munchkins is actually really hard to do. Kansas, she says, is the, the name, name of, of the star. star. Uh, anyways, she's come from we've afar. both done that show, but we did different versions of that show. So, uh, yes, to get ten. Mine was um, wild. There was a whole circus troupe in it. Yeah, we didn't have a circus. Did you have a real dog? Yes. We had two, and one of them, it was her final Wizard of Oz. And oh. so we held a retirement party. Oh. Yeah. It a... was the cutest retirement party I've ever been in in my life. Oh, my God. Yeah, we, uh, yeah. It's, uh, anyways, it's fine. The dog worked sometimes, and, uh. Oh, no, ours were, per- uh, we, we hired, like. Well, you had actual show dogs. We yeah. had someone's pet that yeah. they let us borrow. Like. We had a sitting dog and an acting dog, though. So, like, when, so... Because one of them liked to move and the other didn't. Well, and was, the, so the one who retired had uh-huh. had been an acting dog that became a sitting dog over time. Yeah. She was old. Yeah. Uh, and so she was the one that would sit through, like, somewhere over the rainbow. And then we had a running dog. Yes, right. that makes sense, actually. Anyway, uh, so uh, they, yeah, so there is a, there is a, bra, uh, a road of bronze ingots, one of which um, she takes with her. So, like, I really hope that Kelsier isn't just used to where the ingots are because he might be like, oh no, there's not one there. Oh fuck, what do I do? Ah, coins. Well, there's there's, there's like four of them. So as long as he's got the others to, to um, bounce off, of, it's fine. He's fine. He's sure, fine. Sure, he's sure, 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 an sure. expert. Uh, and kind of. so they run, they, they get all the way uh, to, he goes all the way back to the city to of Luthadale. Luthadale. No. Luthadale. And uh, she chases him there, but he's, like, always a little bit too behind, so she loses him. And so she just starts swinging randomly through the city, trying to figure out where he might go. And she ends up at House Venture, because, god damn it, she dressed as a lady one time, and now she is horny for that boy. She literally cannot stop thinking about him. And while I was reading this, I was like, yeah, that's a little tropey. And then I was like, ah, but I was 16 once, and Mm -hmm. I I get it. That's how I think about Timothy Chalamet. You would think about him all the time. Constantly. Okay, good to know, good to know. Constantly. I will uh, work yeah. on that uh, cosplay. <laughs> I will become uh, the... No, the only person connected. who should cosplay to be Chalamet is Poison. True. Yeah. True, I could not. They already, they already nail it. They nailed it, yeah. Uh, and so uh, she, she goes and she's like looking at House Venture and she's like, fuck, I lost him. But maybe I could go see my boyfriend. Oh, hey, wait, there's Kelsier. He's here too. Oh, is he going to kill... My boyfriend? Uh, no. Oh, he's leaving? I guess I'll follow him. I guess we'll, we'll keep going. And so Kelsier is like, stop following me. What What are you doing? Well, yeah, they get to, they go towards the fucking pad. Credit Shaw. The, yeah, that's it. With all the spikes and spiny things. And I'm like, wow, that's a horrifying visual. Um, And she's like, the, f- the fuck? Let me come with you. It yeah. makes sense to have twice the amount of magic powers. And he's like... You know what? I can't believe I'm agreeing with you. But o- no, you're no. Right. He says the only way I could stop you is by tying you up, and I That's don't want to do that. That's true. He's like, I can either take you with me, or you're gonna show up on your own. And so I'd rather us work together on this. I yeah. get it. I get it. And so they he's like this is ATM. They go, and he's like, look, the last time I tried to get into this room, I uh, it's a very it's the most important room. 
My wife died. My wife died, but we, we had a plan. And so this yeah. time, I'm just going randomly. Yeah, we don't have a plan. And hoping that there won't be Inquisitors there to kill me. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they go, and they break in. They immediately encounter guards. They fight a bunch of people. They kill a bunch of people. And then they get into the very, very, very important room that's very important. And guess what? There are Inquisitors there. Because maybe they're just always Inquisitors that are protecting it if it's very, very important. Or... Credit, did you not think this through fucking at all? What if you weren't betrayed? What Kelsier? if? What did I call him? Credit? That's the other. Yep, K is dyslexia. Maybe there's just always Inquisitors in this or, room. Or, hear me out, or hear me out. The vast amounts of ATM literally let them predict the future. Oh, that far. Oh, it doesn't have to be Ooh. that far. The moment that Kelsier decides that they're going to break in, it becomes canon, right? And it... It, well, it's you know what I mean. Shut I love up. that use of the word canon. Uh, it is. It's canon. So there's just some Inquisitor that's in there watching Kelsier run into the room over and over and over again every time he thinks maybe now's the time. <laughs> oh, Kels is coming. Uh, no, 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 he changed his mind. No, there. Oh, he's, no, no, he changed his mind. No, there. That, no. no, it's real this so, time. So it's, it's, it's real this time. It's like the people in Teleron Riyadh who are like there briefly. Yeah, yeah, they appear as like, uh, like faded versions of themselves. Oh man, know, this series think... is going to get real complicated if you can use the adium to see that far in the future. Well, I don't know how far you can see, yeah. but like the Steel Inquisitors, there's obviously always some at the the, the palace. Because yeah. why wouldn't there be? And so the fact when you introduce being able to see the future even a little bit. There's always room for a little bit more. Um, and so that's I, why I was like, that's not... So the reason that the Lord Ruler also hoards the ATM is that you can, like... Because you can flare, yeah. like, pewter. So if you can, like, flare ATM and see bits of the future, I don't know how far back that goes, but yeah. I think it's definitely a possibility. I think the, the, the interesting thing about this is that it tells me that Brandon Sanderson definitely plays video games. Because... The way this Inquisitor is introduced into the room is every video game boss fight where you get into the room and you think there's nothing there and then you open the door and then as you're opening the door, the video game boss pushes his way out and you looks over you far. and the two come in from the side. Like yeah. it was the, this was the most, uh, I play video games moment I think I've ever read in a book. Mm hmm this just happened in Halo Infinite. There's a great door open. Uh, the, literally, this is every video game ever. Yeah. And I loved it. Uh, the door the Inquisitors behind. Yeah. are horrifying. horrifying. Yeah. They are so scary. The fact that they shoot knives out of their mouths is what? crazy. They shoot knives out of their mouths? Yeah. Vin has to use the Adium to block the stream of knives coming out of the guy's mouth. He picks up a handful of metal yeah, and then sharks. puts them in his mouth and goes, Mah! Does and he put them in his mouth? I don't think he puts them in his mouth. I don't remember that. He, like, picks up a bunch of metal shards that, like, cut into his hand and then, like, pushes them with, with steel? Yeah, I don't think they go in the mouth. Give me a sec. You talk about it. Sure, sure, sure. I, uh, I don't, I, I, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's fine. You read a lot yesterday. <laughs> I mean, that would be a horrifying visual, but I, I, yeah, it's, it, it's not from the mouth. Um, the, but they do, like, she, they do spray basically like ninja stars that they just have. Um, oh, yeah, no, he opened his hand, and a spray of tiny transition dagger shot at her. I thought he opened his mouth. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. Maybe they have metal teeth. Could you imagine if the Inquisitors replaced all their teeth with, like, metal pieces? And so they just, they, like, replenish them. They, like, spew them out of their mouth, and then, you know, when they, then they, like, put, they put them back in. They have, like, three rows of shark's teeth. Yeah. It's fine. I don't know where I... I don't know how I made that mouth. Well, I mean, they have metal coming out of their eyes. So, like... You were like, maybe they also comes out of the mouth. Maybe. I don't know. You know what? It's fine. It's fine. Tuan is black. <laughs> Just so you know. Fuck you. <laughs> I love you. I love you dearly. Um, In the live-action version that I'm going to direct, it's going to be out of his mouth. He's going to open his mouth. There's just going to be a spray of metal. Yeah. Love it. I love that. I like the teeth idea. I like that you just replace your metal teeth. Um, so you always have uh, uh, you always have a supply. 
Anyways. Well, I feel dumb now, so you're thanks, You're fine, chat. you're fine, you're fine. Uh, the Kelsier gets wounded pretty bad. Uh, yep. Vin gets hit with a fucking axe in the side. Basically. That, like, cleaves into her guts. Yeah. She burns pewter like fucking crazy and starts leaping from spire to spire while she bleeds out. She gets a book to stop the, yeah. like, spikes. She's like, what in this room does not have metal on it? A book! Uh, so that Inquisitor, at the very least, is a Mistborn. I don't know if they all are. They probably all I think are. They all. They have probably to. all are. Yeah. Um, yeah. This action sequence is so good. I, we don't need to go blow by blow, but like Vin, Vin's so scrappy and cool. And the moment at the end where she, the, where the Inquisitor captures her, mm-hmm. and then it's like, oh, it's not an Inquisitor. It was Sezad. Is so good. I know. And he's got to be some kind of crazy, powerful person. Yeah. Mm-hmm, for like, sure. like, like he. There's, there's something going on with him. And maybe it's all Terrasmen, and maybe it's not. Like, no, I think it's that he's a keeper. I think it's a keeper thing. A keeper. Okay. So I don't think all terracemen are keepers, but no. he is a keeper. No. Yeah. Yeah. And like the keepers are so dangerous that the Lord Ruler tried to wipe them all out. Like there's yes. something going on there. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. There, yeah. Even, even says that is like, yeah, it's pretty cool. The Lord Ruler fears us. And K- Kelsier's like, do they really? fear you though? And he's like, he's like yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, they do. Yeah, they do. <laughs> I was like, fuck, I love says it so much. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. <laughs> He uh, saves Vin. He does. Um, thank and then God. performs surgery on her because he remembers what surgery was like before the Lord Ruler ruled the world because he has m- he metal has brain. all the knowledge? Yeah. Ever? Seems like He it. is C-3PO. Seems like he knows everything. He is, he's ninja C-3PO. Love that. I love that. Except then he, he can't be made of metal, you know? Or maybe he is. Metal mind. Daniel Closer, I feel like you've had a lot of messages deleted today. Yeah. Don't spoil. Yeah, Don't Daniel get Christie, you're gonna us. get hidden from the channel if you if you keep trying to spoil. Yes. yes. Uh, be careful. Please be respectful. Um, if our mod, if gets I annoyed, notice that you're getting deleted a lot, then you're 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 on you're you're hanging by thread. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they they get her back to Clubs' house, uh, and the good news mm-hmm. is that um, the the book that. The book that the that Seiza managed to find while looking for Vin mm-hmm. is written in Clenium, which is the place that the epigraph says the pers- the hero of ages was. Mm-hmm. And so if the if the big thing happened in Clenny and the this book is written in Clenium, I think that the book is gonna have answers about a thousand years ago. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that the book is the epilogues. Ember Eyes. Epilogue? No, epigraphs. Uh, Ember Eyes says, says that is so mild mannered right up until he isn't. I was thinking of him like Alfred from Batman. There's a great yeah. comic where Batman is tied up and Alfred shows up with a shotgun to save him uh, in like a Batman mask and a shotgun. It's really great. Yeah. 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 So uh, that is definitely who says that is. A thousand percent. Yeah. My my big bold prediction is that uh, the ep- epigraph is the prequel. Is the yeah the intro yeah. things. And the hero of ages is the Lord Ruler who thought that he was there to save the day but ended up ruling it. He is he fucked up. Randolph Randolph Thor. Randolph Thor. If Rand went Darth Rand, full Darth Rand. Um, or he's just Randolph Thor now. He's like ah fuck my children. I'm gonna get out of here. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, and that's the end of the. Uh, they're they're gonna see if um, they're gonna see if they can heal Vin, and that's it. That's where the reading left off. Yeah, I think we I think we nailed the epigraphs, no. right? <laughs> the Hero of Ages is definitely the Lord Ruler, and he t- twists it. Oh, a hundred percent. I think that it has to be. He talks about the leaves being green. Yeah, which we know that they're not anymore. Um, he, he talks, talks about um, being. He, he he starts to be. We watch him start to. Not trust the terrorismen. Yeah. And then he ultimately tries to wipe them out. And we know out. that the Lord Ruler hates the terrorismen. Yeah. Um, they got like a special kind of punishment. I don't know what the fuck that means. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's like all these little hints where it's very clearly a before the Lord Ruler time. So it makes sense that the Lord Ruler's, that this is the Lord Ruler's perspective. Yeah. And I think that the Lord Ruler, instead of being like a Sauron type character, is actually going to be active and present. Um, oh, a hundred percent. As a yeah, villain, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, he, he, I think Vin will meet him in this book. I don't think that they in will take. Book. I don't think they'll take him down, but I think that Vin will be in the same room as him by the end of the book. Okay, interesting. Yeah, because we're because we're gonna get a visual on him. I thought right? Kelsier was gonna be captured, and that the whole plan was gonna go to shit because they had to go get Kelsier. But somehow he makes it out. Yeah. Somehow. He's, somehow Palpatine returned. 
Exactly. Um, well, maybe figure that out later, or maybe we won't. What do you think the I ninth think medal is? I think he, like, barely survives, but he gets away. Yeah. What do you think the ninth medal is? Adium helps you see the future, so it, it makes you reflect on your past. It makes you introspective. It is the therapy um, medal. The therapy medal. It makes you, yeah, it makes you introspective. Well, no, it's, it's probably a paired be... medal, right? So well, that's, they I all think that there's 12. Be... And I think the 12th medal is what is keeping the Lord Ruler alive. And so there's like the, <laughs> the 11th medal is the death medal. And the, death medal. the 12th medal is the um, um, immortality medal. And so he's using the 12th medal to keep himself going. And the 11th medal is the key to stopping the 12th medal. Okay, that's kind of fun. But it's the death medal. The death medal. I love that. Hell yeah. Um, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I think, I don't know. I think the ninth medal has to be, because there are a lot of opposites. It's Norwegian black medal. It has to be like you see the past somehow it has to be something mm -hmm. something along those lines to keep the theme going i like the theme yeah so it, i think that they're all paired so yeah. i feel like nine has to i don't i, I don't think seeing the past makes sense because why because like uh, how far back would it go don't know um i, I don't know but it, it's got to be something related to seeing the future yeah so the opposite or it is the enlightenment medal mm-hmm Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe the ninth medal, sh rather than showing what is happening, like shows you what can't happen. Maybe. Maybe it shows you versions of the future that didn't happen. It's oh, so the it's multiverse. Flicker, flicker. It's the multiverse. It's the flicker flicker metal. Yeah, it's the flicker flicker metal. That'd be fun. Is the Cosmere just worlds where people took different paths then? After taking Adium? Crazy. I fucking love that. Popcorn, popcorn, popping corn. Guys, if you're excited, just popcorn in the chat. Yeah, I'm excited. It's, it's going to be fun. Um, I'm I'm really hot on this. I, I like this book a lot. I it's think it's great. very good. I like the characters. You wanted to have a conversation about Kelsier at the end. So tell yeah. me, what are we talking about Kelsier before we get into high low? So my big bold prediction for the series yeah. is that it is the better version of Attack on Titan. And that Kelsier is the person who lives long enough to see himself become the villain. You think Kelsier becomes the bad guy? In a sense. Oh, I don't think he lives that long. Oh, okay. Right. That's fair. No, I, I think I think Kelsier, I think introducing Marsh as his brother mm -hmm. and having a very different perspective on the value of human life is really interesting. And I think that Kelsier... I, I think it, that Kelsier is the trope, is the is the the hero who lives long enough to see himself become the villain in a way that I think the Lord Ruler also was, and I think those two characters are going to be reflective of one another, huh. and that and that and Kelsier might die because of it, but I, I think that it's like Attack on Titan, but done well in a way, I... like he's like fucking kill all the nobles, get them out of here. They 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 fucked us up for so long. They did all these terrible things to us. They all gotta die. And that he's going to, he already has such a disregard for human life. If they're, if they are working for, against him. Yeah. If, if they have any connection to being a noble whatsoever. Even yeah. Ska, who are like forced to work for like the noblemen as like guards and whatever. He has absolutely no problem killing them. And I think mm -hmm. that the interesting choice in this series is to take that to the extreme. Because he's a very likable character. And I think that it's going to be really fun to explore with someone like Brandon Sanderson. Because I think he gets it. And I'm very excited for that. That is I my... think you might be disappointed. Because I, I, I... Look, I think Kelsier's going to kill a lot of people. Yeah. I don't think Kelsier has any desire. And I would, I would legitimately be shocked if he... If they won and he had any desire to rule. To rule? No, I don't think he rules. No, I just think that his like blatant killing goes too far. Oh, I don't. Okay. Kill slavers. Do it. Just, just I, I, I no. <laughs> sure, but you've introduced the character of L. What's his face? Timothy Chalamet, mm -hmm. who's like, yeah, the fucking nobles are assholes. Yeah. Whereas Kelsier would kill him without a second thought, right? If it served him, I don't think Kelsier would just kill him for no reason. Sure. But I just mean, I think that Kelsier, I think, t I think takes it too far. That's my prediction. 
I don't agree with you in that I don't think that Kelsier is trying to enact a genocide. I think that he is much more targeted than that. Maybe. I think Kelsier is fine with the nobles as a people surviving into the next version of this world. I don't think that his thing is like, these people all need to die. Because the plan is never about just murdering people. The plan is about who do I need to kill to There's get at books. this one guy. Yeah, yeah. Right? And I, I, I think that if he goes as broad as just killing people randomly, I don't... Oh, I don't think it's going to be random. No, no, I think it's going to be very but calculated. But that, that is what Aaron does. Oh, no, Aaron just kills everybody because they yeah. were, like, evil. And I think that, like... But, no, no, Aaron... Aaron because there was so... I don't want to spoil Attack on Titan, so I, I want to be careful here. Fair. My, you know I, I'm fair, only going to talk fair. about Mistborn. I that's don't fair. think that's that... Fair. I don't think Kelsier will ever transition from how pointed his goal is to it just being people in general. I, I, I think that he is a character who, to me, reads very much as he is going to... I think he'll succeed. I do think they will, obviously, like right? Like, I think the book mm-hmm. ends with a bad guy dying. I think that everything is about him, and I don't think that... Uh, I don't think he views anyone around the Emperor as worth killing unless it gets him closer to the lord ruler i just i i, I don't think that he would like bomb sure, a city but uh, like how many how help. many innocents would he kill if it gave him a shot at the lord ruler i don't know that's i don't know why we've I never think... seen him kill an innocent person well, and, and that's just why i right. think so that, like, like my, my 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 pushback you on start that here and then you t- like there are so many books i think that you there's have... only three they don't have as much they don't have that much time I think Brandy, I think Brandy can do it. Brandy? Brandy. Yeah. You're a fine girl, but a good <laughs> wife you will be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't. I Like I said, it yeah. is my big, bold prediction. I was like, you know what? I have feelings about him as a character. I think he's ca- very charismatic. What do you, and I think okay. he's an interesting person to explore that concept with. Not not where you think this is going, but what do you think of the Kelsier uh, leading her into the, the keep at the end of this? What do I think about... Yeah. What? What do you think about Kelsier leading Vin into the keep at the end of this reading? I mean, like, she said she was going to go anyway. Yeah. Like, I don't blame Kelsier for, for that. Because I, I think that she had her best chance being with him. Yeah. <laughs> Unless they have some weird tabs on Kelsier specifically, and that's how they knew. I don't know. Um, Don't know how they knew that he was going to be there, and so that makes it difficult, but... Um, yeah, I, I I don't think Kelsey had a choice in that instance. No, I agree. I, I agree. He, I think he's going to blame himself for it, but, like, I think that he needs to recognize that he has aligned himself with a girl who is not going to listen to him. Yeah. Brandy Sandy. Brandy Sandy. You're a fine girl. <laughs> um, yeah, I am, I'm pleased as punch right now. I, uh, I like this book a lot. All I, I want to do is, is keep reading. Yeah. Like, I'm probably going to read this section now, and then I'm going to read it again on Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm not. I have a lot of work to do today, but, uh... Well, yeah! Guys, we're doing a Dragonlance campaign. Yeah. If you didn't already know, we're very, very excited about it, so... We are going to be filming our first, our, our session zero tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, which means I have to uh, go make the basement uh, filmable. Uh, I wish me it. luck. I got um, it. But, uh, no, this was fun. Well, let's do our high-low. For those of you who are new, coming in for Cosmere, uh, the way we do this is that we celebrate our highs and we commiserate over each other's lows, just like my family did uh, growing up when my mom married my stepdad and we were blended. I've got five siblings and my parents had to make us like each other. And so we this is what we did every night at dinner. And so I brought this into the podcast because mm-hmm. I thought it would be a good way to end uh, by celebrating what we loved about the book and also maybe uh, being honest about the things that aren't working for us. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have a hard time finding a low today. Uh, if, uh, you want to do your own high-low in the chat, please do. High-low in chat or Discord if you want to spark some conversation. Always happy to Turvok, have that. thank you for that super chat. Thank I'm you. I'm excited for Blue-Eyed Samurai. Uh, that's going to be coming in February. Yeah. I'm very excited as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm very excited. We're going to watch that before we go to Denver so that it goes up while we're away. Yes, um, heard it's fantastic. Yes, very excited for Blue-Eyed Samurai. Clarus, what was, oh, the way we do this. Clarus does her high, I do my low. I, she does her low, I do my high. Because we like to compliment sandwich this beach. Clarus, what is your high? Well, um, my, god damn it, there are so many. Yeah. And I don't, I don't really know how to pick, because there's overall things that are highs, and then there's also specific moments that are, like, highs. Like, highs in fantasy, not even just in this book. Like, so, this is very difficult. It's a really, really excellent start. 
It is. Yeah. Strong start. I did not want to put this book down. It was very hard to stop reading. Um, I know what your high is going to be. I'm going to pick a different high. Yeah, I think it's pretty obvious what my high is. I, I think it's pretty obvious. I, so I am going to take... Uh, my high is the depth of Vin's character, which I think is shown in very specific okay. moments. Okay, yeah, I like that. The the realizing that she is herself in the mist, that who she has been maybe isn't her, and who she is at the balls maybe isn't her as well. Those moments that make her feel like a fully fleshed out character who has just tried to survive this entire time. And I love, yeah, I love, I love reading about her and how she sees the world and discovers this world. And I think it's just really well done and fascinating. So that's my high. What's your low? Um, that's tough. I don't know. Uh, it's a good book. I, I don't really have one. I know, right? I'm like, I, I don't really, I really know. like the start of this book. Like, I don't, I, I like the prose. I like the pacing. Even, even the dark elements, I think, are handled really well. Mm-hmm. Like, trusting. Like, my hello is gonna be, oh, I don't like trusting. He's dead. Like, I enjoyed the way that he died. Like, it's, it's tough for me. Um. Oh yeah, Bogdan's right. Ah uh, yeah, I, it needs more female characters. Sure, sure. I, yeah, I, that's there the one. Go. That's the one criticism I think I have of it. It starts off. It's very light on female characters. Thank you, Bogdan. I think that's valid. And I've said that throughout the podcast. I, I think um, I, I do think that like Vin kind of being the only one is is fine um, for what their story they're telling. But I do think that if I were adapting it into something else, I would add, ch- make some of them women. Yeah, yeah. I um, I agree, honestly, with our mods for Milo that there is a bit of an exposition dump as like. This is how the magic works and everything. I liked learning about that. It was just like, it was like a, a huge chunk at a time. I prefer when Brandon Sanderson gives us like bits at a time. Like there's things that we know or there's things that he's mentioned that we don't know about. Like it kind of all comes together. Um, I I liked, the, I liked being hmm. able to understand the magic system as a whole, but I do think that it was like a lot in one big lump sum, which is 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 barely a low for me. Is barely a low. Hmm. It is just the only low that I can really think of, because I'm like, okay, yeah, maybe it was like a little bit much all at one time, like five percent. Disagree but like, really hard. I yes, thought I know you do. I thought that Kel- the way that it was played through her POV. Getting to have Kelsey be like, this is a thing. And then getting to experience her wonder in experiencing each individual thing for the first time. Leading up to the tension of jumping up and then jumping down the wall. I actually thought putting that all together really worked for me. Because Mm -hmm. it was not about the exposition. It was about Vin's emotional reaction to the exposition. For sure, for sure. In a way that I... I'm surprised it didn't work for you as much. I, I thought that scene... It worked. That was I one am, of my favorite chapters. I am struggling to find a low, and so I'm like, <laughs> well, there was, you know, a huge chunk of information and exposition in that, which is, like, okay. not my least favorite, but yeah. it's, like, it was a lot. It's not, it, it is barely a low for me. Yeah. I, I yeah. like understanding the magic system, and like you said, I like that it was linked to a character and her emotional, like, it, fe- like her, if it her had feelings been- on it. It's tough. If it had been from Kelsier's point of view, I would agree with you. Sure. But because we get to experience Vin taking in the information the way that Brandon Sanderson writes it, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I really like, <laughs> Lona Boy says nerdy like the novice class at the tower. I wanted more classes. Yeah. 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 The low See, that... <laughs> is still, yeah, it's still great, but yeah. I'm just, I am trying to find a low. It's just one of my, it is one of my favorite things about the book. Which so, is totally fair. Uh, but my high is obvious. Uh, my high is the first time yeah. Kelsier uh, travels across the town using the, uh, he, he puts the cloak on and he shoots up into the air and starts traveling across the city. And it is, in my opinion, one of the coolest um, introductions to a power set I've ever read in my life. Yeah. And I, mean... I deeply, deeply like fell in love with the series immediately upon reading it. Yes. Um I absolutely I just find the movement of it to it helps that Brandon Sanderson writes the movement in a very like clear and chaotic way that I find very which is a oxymoron I get, but um he he just writes it in a way that feels so frenetic and I, I, I adored it. I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. Yeah, yeah. It uh, is really cool. And so I'm, that was definitely my high. Um, totally fair. Yeah, for sure. 
Yeah. I like that it's not just put a metal coin on your chest and then move it around and zip. I like the way that it moves and there's like an up and down. There's, it, you know, and I, I do think that it reminds me of Spider-Man in a way that is, you know, one of my favorite superheroes. But yeah, um, the motion I of it is well done. Just fucking think it's so cool. I love this book. I, I'm so happy with it so far. Um, yes. Yes. I very glad you, we started reading this. I usually don't like part ones this much. Mm. Um, I usually, like, it usually takes me, especially with longer fantasy stuff, I usually like part two or part three the most. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a big Empire Strikes Back boy. Um, but, um, there's just something about this system and, and the characters and everything about it. And, and, and the, how dark it is, but how well handled the darkness is. Yeah. Is very impressive to me. Uh, especially because this is one of Brandon Sanderson's earlier books. I think that he handles the balance of that really well. And, um... I'm I'm like I'm I'm in love with reading this. I cannot wait to keep going. Yeah, me too. Yeah, uh, and that's where we're gonna end the show. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks for all the super chats. Thank you for being here. Uh, yes, come next thank week, you. you will be able to uh, subscribe on Twitch and send biddies. So that might change the yeah. dynamic of the show a little bit. We'll figure that out. That channel for sure. Um, but um, um, this has been fun. If, we're so excited that you're as excited as we are. <laughs> uh, please go check out our sponsor, MissingMountainGaming.com. Mm -hmm. uh, use code NerdyNightly15 for fifteen percent off your order over there. Get you some math rocks. Please do not eat them. They are not for consumption. They are for rolling. If you want edible math rocks, go somewhere else. Miss Mount Gaming sells the, the, the rolly type, not the ED type. Um, if you want uh, to uh. have a heads up for what's coming this next week, um, we are going to continue our expanse reactions. Obviously, uh, One Piece is going to move to two episodes a week next week, Wednesday and Sunday. Uh, and uh, now that Gen V and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood are done on the channel, we are going to drop our Dragonlance Session Zero on Tuesday. You'll be able to meet uh, the meet characters, characters that we're gonna that we're gonna get to meet tomorrow. So I'm very excited for that. And um, the uh, Percy Jackson will not go up on Thursday next week. Uh, it'll go up on probably Saturday. Thursday. Yeah, Percy Jackson goes up on Thursday. It's not gonna go up on Thursday. We're out of town for two days next week, so we're not gonna get to next, watch it yes. until um, Thursday night or Friday night. So not sorry, not next week. The no both. Oh, right, because we're, yeah. yeah. The next week, Percy Jackson's going to go up late. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. And uh, Peter Soderbergh asked how many chapters to read for next week. Next week, we're going to cover just part, part three. three. So I think that's chapters, I can tell you right now. Um, yeah, part three starts at chapter 16 and... Chapters 16 through 25. Great, thank you. It's a, it's a little bit less reading next week. Uh, and then the week after, we're doing chapters uh, 26 through 38. And the epilogue. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to be done this book in two weeks, and then we're going to have a full book recap, and then yes. we're going to start... What's the book after this one? Number two. Heir of the Survivor. No. Well of Ascension. Well of Ascension? Yeah. <gasps> Maybe the well is what's inside the thing. The temple. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, I oh, don't that know. would make sense. Weird. <laughs> Maybe we just spoil ourselves. It's fine. We shouldn't uh, read the titles of the books. I guess. Um, I'm very excited. Uh, we will, um, yeah, we'll be back in a week. Hell yeah. Kender's Rise of Our Campaign, yeah, Blige. There's going to be a Kender. I'm excited for you to meet him. Yes. If you like the video, like and subscribe to the channel. If you don't hit the dislike button, leave me in comments down below because the algorithm god is hungry and we must feed her. Mm -hmm. This episode, that algorithm goddess is... Vin? Yep. I don't know that there's another woman that it could be. Uh, if you want to follow us around the internet, you can. I'm at Nerdy Nightly. I'm at Clarice Polaris. If you would like, on the podcast feed, please rate us five stars. Give us a review. We're going to start reading reviews again. So go go make us say dumb shit uh, in the podcast. Go for it. If um, your non-working Skyrim crowd control extension is still on on Twitch, by the way, thank you, Blind Seer. Didn't think about that. Yeah, I'll yeah. turn that off. Sorry. Uh, thank you for being here. I'm so excited we're doing the Cosmere. It's going to be a wild couple of years ahead and um yeah we have so much reading to do so go read and as always go we'll read and reread do something nerdy tonight bye everybody oh my god <laughs> i was like no. are we cutting that section most people are adults but there's no adult women there's gay lovers in Breeze and Ham are definitely fucking, right? Definitely fucking. Breeze and Ham. They have philosophical conversations while they're inside yeah. of each other. It's why it's why they it's why they put up a front of being frustrated with each other in front of other people. Yeah. Is they're that couple they're that gay couple that fights constantly but has like raucous weird sex. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, how yeah. do they work?
Yeah. Hi! <laughs> the Steel Inquisitors have weird orgies. The 20 of them. Do you think they... They they rub they rub the flat sides of their eye things nails against one another. They're like ah uh, yes. <laughs> like create friction and it like buzzes that part Ew, in the yeah. brain where pleasure that. happens. I hate yeah. that. Yeah, not into it. Eye nails mm-hmm. to eye nails. Ew. Yeah. Ew. Yeah. No, that sounds awful. I hate it. Oh, if you like flick those, they get hard immediately. How do you? Are all the inquisitors male? No idea. I don't think they're. I don't think their genders are ever described. They're just their their. How do you think the myth race wraiths? Reproduce? Do you think that they absorb genitals from bodies that are dead? And how many genitals... dicks does the Mithrath have? How many dicks? Oh my God! Does the Mithrath have? How many dicks? That is the how first question dicks? we will ask Brandon Sanderson. Does a Mithrath have? Speak to him. How one many day. dicks? How many dicks? That's Do you a think valid that because question. of the weird form of their anatomy that they could have a dick and a vagina in proximity and they could fuck themselves? Yeah. That's yeah. the first thing I'm gonna ask Brandon Sanderson. Absolutely. <laughs> can a can a Mithri Mithrath intentionally ingest a dick and a vagina and place them in a way where it could give itself pleasure. Maybe. Oh, that's how they reproduce. They steal a vagina and they steal a penis and then they fuck themselves so and then like they produce. they're like flowers and their children are like clones of yes, them. Yes, except that they, because they ingest so much different DNA, they're mm-hmm. not clones. Oh, okay. Because the, the, the it's subsequent Mistwraith becomes a clone of just that penis and that vagina. Oh, okay. And then that Mistwraith goes and collects other DNA, so they're so not does really that mean, clones. Does that mean the baby Mistwraiths are just a penis and a vagina? Nothing else? <laughs> it's like the hormone monster, and he's just pulling dicks out of his pockets. <laughs> If you weren't part of the Wheel of Time book club, you have no idea what just happened. Bye, everybody. See you next week. Bye. Get the fuck out of here. (laughs)